Welcome to Hanging With Bears, episode 598, I believe. So, welcome aboard, welcome aboard. Uh, good morning, afternoon, evening. I think that's the three parts of the day covered. So, today we've got on Flo Cal. Um, I think it's the second time I've spoken to him. Don't think it's the third. Um, but, yeah, he's a, he's a good guy. We're going to talk about the festival, um, which Joe was here, so he'll be... Very giddy about talking about the festival. It seems to be all he's talks about ever since. It seems to be the best times of his life. But what a long life it is. Uh, who else have we got in? Uh, Jayco, welcome. Marty, welcome. Uh, Mr. Quark, 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 welcome. Uh, Jonah, welcome. So yeah, once uh, once Local gets in, we'll we'll get going. Because it's a nice early one for me. It's only midnight here, so nice early early start for me. Um, who else we got in? Uh, la, 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 la. I'm so bad at like breaking names up. Uh, Riverside, welcome. Uh, Dearly, welcome. We got the Palestinian. Oh, we got a Palestinian and a Jew in. Oh dear. Um, we may literally be hanging with bears today. Um, and an Armenian. Jesus. Well. It'll either we're either gonna broke a piece today or it's just gonna be uh Yeah. There's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of blood flowing. Uh to Aker, welcome. Yeah, so as soon as Flow Car gets in there you go. Uh go to just to freak you out a little bit. We've got a nice thing of Ira there. As he plows through your I don't know, was it a once great country? Kind of like your pointless area of the map. As he ploughs through there in his shiny tank. Um, who else have we got in? Who else have we got in? Jonah, you and me need to do another stream sometime as well. It's been too long since we've done one. Uh, fellow racist, welcome. I don't look tired or sound tired. Great. To be honest, I'm actually the most tired I've been for a while. Um, so it must I must have like the flip side of it. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know why. I've just been, I've just been like exhausted this week. Okay, can the Jew and the um, the Palestinian in the chat just just you know just shake hands? That's all you need to do. This is the problem with with your cultures. You you you're always trying to look for the thing. If you if you follow the British way and just shake a hand, don't high five like a stupid American. Like shake hand and you can feel the grip of the hand. And you'll you'll know the sincerity behind it. Um, speaking of a sincerity, there's a, a leprechaun come in in Bravey Bear. But yeah, just just shake hands. That's all you need to do. Shake hands, say I'm sorry, and the other one say I'm sorry, and then you both move on, and that's that's the British way. That's how we. Formed an empire and took over the world. Um, British way is withering away with shit teeth. Well, go to. I think you'll find that the American teeth obsession is nothing more than a than a Jew grabble as usual. Who's most of your dentists? Where are they from? They're either Chinese or Jewish. And who's telling you, who's selling you fluoride and telling you that you've all got bad teeth and you all need dental work that you have to pay for? Never had braces, never had anything. Perfectly straight. Listen. Look at that. Squeaky clean. Perfect. I've had like two fillings maybe. But, yeah, we, we don't fall for the, for the J tricks, you see. Whereas all the, all you Americans, you're like, yeah, well, I mean, I don't want bad teeth. I don't. I don't I'll, I'll I'll pay a Jew to fix them. There's nothing wrong with them. Just leave them. All kids' teeth a little bit wonky as they grow, they form, and then that's that's how we. That's how we go. Unless you're like a crackhead or something, but. Um, Bravey says that even an Irishman and an Englishman can be friends. I mean, I I doubt that, Bravey, but whatever. Maybe you can. Uh, give us a sec. My thing's frozen. Flow, Cal, I see you. Uh, 
Wait one second. I shall accept your thing. Uh, Japanese have worse teeth than Brits. Oh, I think most people have worse teeth than Brits. I, I think I, I don't know where this this things come from that we have bad teeth. And say, other than the the Jewish dentist who's telling you. So do you think the Jewish dentist that's telling you all that you don't want to have bad teeth, like the English, might might be trying to sell you something? Um, I. I have accepted it. Let me send you a request for a coast in case. Um, it's still showing up as a as a request sent, so hopefully. Uh, uh, Toronto Juice says I paid six thousand six thousand dollars times two to put brace on my kids. I don't think it did any good. Six thousand dollars? Is that how much dentistry costs over there? If you pay like a hundred pound for dentist work here, you've like you've rebuilt like half your mouth. Um, you're off my Christmas card list, stunt. Um, good, bravey. Thank you, because it'll probably be ticking knowing you lot. So yeah, I don't, I don't want a Christmas card from you. It'll either be ticking or, or it'll have white powdering, and it won't be fun white powder. Uh, People have bad teeth because of pacifiers and cutlery. Yeah, I do think the, the, the pacifier dummy thing is, it gives you that, like, pointy front teeth thing. Um, let me see if I can send this request now. Give us one sec, Floca. Right, okay. So let me send you a request now. So you should have that. If you don't have it, just let us know and we'll let you come. Hey, we Hello, uh, okay. Finally cool. work. Good. Yeah, How's it going? Yeah, yeah, it's good. It can be a bit temperamental Instagram, especially lately. It seems to be to be getting worse, like getting people getting it all joined up and stuff. But we're we're sorted. So. Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. It took me. I had to go out and uh, come back in before it let me join. Yeah, it's usually the best way. Just turn it off and on again. With I think we're still at that level of <laughs> technology. But that's always always the fix. Yeah. just re hit reset. So how have you been? I've uh, been good and uh, busy since the festival. Uh, working a lot and covering for some people that have been out sick and that kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. How's um, how's California these days? Oh, same as it ever is. Yeah, it's been nice. Uh, we're finally starting to get into a little bit of a rainy season, I guess, which is mm -hmm. a winter here usually. So yeah. uh, we've gotten some rain the last couple of weeks, but otherwise it's been pretty clear and sunny. So yeah, yeah. weather's been yeah. good. i uh, been staying busy. Kid's good. She's busy with school and band and all that. So mm -hmm. yeah, not, not a lot of... Uh, <laughs> not, not a lot of... Um, I'm sorry, I'm just laughing at all the beard comments. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. Like, even when you go out somewhere, if people aren't used to it, they get, it's, uh, the beard is such a, like, a topic of conversation. Mm. It's like, it's just hair on your face, you know? Mm. What's the big deal? It, the problem is now, though, a lot of the, um, a lot of the pretty boys are getting beards, and they're, they're, they're very well, like, they're perfectly groomed and perfectly, like, well, do you know what I mean? They look like they're stuck on. They, they look like, they're like fake beards. Yes. And so it's time to give him beards, like a bit of a, I don't know, it's, it's they, they, they've kind of gated up a bit, but well, over here they have anyway. Uh, yeah, no lipstick, uh, no lipstick here, Burn Beer. Uh, purely Living Man says, what part of Cali? I'm in, in uh, near San Jose, so I'm in Silicon Valley, basically, oh, okay, just cool. about an hour south of San Francisco. I like it up there, like scenery wise and stuff, but I've never got the thing with San Francisco. I've I've been like a few times now and I don't get it. I don't get why like, how it's so do you know what I mean like what the fuss is about? Because yeah. there's yeah. there's not much there really. Yeah, it's not that big of a city. I think it's uh yeah, I lived there for a year. When mm -hmm. I was the first time I was in California was uh, ninety eight and I lived in San Francisco for a year. Right. Uh, it's it's changed since then, but it's basically the same same mm -hmm. kind of thing. Uh you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know what the attraction is. I'm not a city guy, so I've never, mm. e even where I live now, there's too many people, you know. So, yeah, I'm, uh, 
the city doesn't appeal to me in general, but I could I can see the attraction to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. It's there's a lot to do if if you're like a foodie or something. There's all kinds of restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, it's not that big, so you really don't need a car to get around. Mm -hmm. uh, it's only yeah, driving around it's a pain in the ass. Really, it's, it's not. Yeah, especially downtown. Yeah, and they're about to have a big uh, conference there uh, next week called the Apex Conference. I think it's some kind of Asian Pacific economic thing. Right. And so they're supposed to have like all sorts of people there and have a whole zone of the city just cordoned off like it's by the Secret Service, you know, because it's going to be all kind of world leaders there and all that. So I'm going to try to stay away from the city during that time. Yeah, I think it's it's probably, it's probably wise. At least, you know, they, they shouldn't blow it up like when they're in town. So Yeah, uh, yeah hopefully they don't pull, pull that trick there. Uh, I know they're going to have the one of the bridges closed during part of that. So. Right. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, just like I said, I just never... Certainly, like, coming from England, like, the first time I went, I was really excited to go to San Francisco because we you, you see it all the time in movies, you hear about it all the time. It's just, like... Yeah. It's, it's just one of the cities, like, you're supposed to go to. Um, And, yeah, I went, and I just... Like, I don't... I didn't get... I like the Golden Gate Bridge. I liked... Like I said, I like the... I preferred, like, Santa Cruz and stuff. I yeah. prefer just being, like, a little out of it. I was going to say say it's the area and stuff yeah. around it that kind of makes it it's not necessarily the city because uh, yeah. i don't i mean i don't go to the city much at mm. all uh you know there's uh, uh i don't i don't have a, a desire to go down, downtown and the the park is nice i like golden gate mm. park um but you know once you've seen the bridge a couple of times it's yeah. like what's the big deal yeah exactly. but yeah around it there's all sorts of there's lots of you got the whole coast there you have moon bay mm. and santa cruz further south like you were talking about and then north of the city you don't have to go far to go see redwoods and yeah you know a lot of nice parks so well uh, the first night i was there i stayed in because i didn't know anywhere like any of the areas within san francisco and i stayed in tenderloin um because it was like one of the cheapest hotels that looked okay and yeah. it was like a really old hotel and it looked nice on the pictures mm -hmm. i thought oh, that's cheap I'll, I'll stay there and then found out like why it was cheap when, <laughs> when i was staying there yeah. Um, so yeah, I walked out the door and like full kind of like all a load of billabong had bought like on holiday and stuff. So I just looked like like Mr. Tourist. You know what I mean? I sell like label banging off stuff and everything. Like and I'm just walking through Tango Line. Yeah, um, you look like an easy target. Yeah, but I, I never, no one, there was never any trouble or anything. But it was just like I was crossing over the street constantly. I was just like, yeah, yeah I didn't didn't feel. Uh, I felt out of my comfort zone a little bit there. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't really like going down there. I, I drive in there for work sometimes, and I just go in and do my thing and get mm -hmm. out of there because it is like the traffic's kind of a nightmare. Yeah, and there's just uh, uh, little pockets of you know just debauchery you gotta drive through. Yeah, it'd be like two blocks with just people everywhere on the street, and tents, and just all kinds of stuff. And then you clear out of those two blocks, and it's totally normal, you know. So it's it's weird. Yeah, it is. It is weird, like how the because the last time I went, I noticed like there was a lot more tents than than like the years have been before. So the last time I went, especially in LA, yeah, and it was it was literally like you'd have really nice streets and so, and then you turn the corner and it was they were right there. It was like you That's know what I mean? Like it's, yeah, there's it's like that uh, everywhere. Uh, uh, the town I live in is is they, they don't really let them stay. Uh, set up here too much, but all in the surrounding areas. Any anywhere that's like, a, you know, an area that nobody owns mm -hmm. is kind of a city land or state land. They can kind of fit a place in. So yeah. it's a lot of it. It's definitely, uh, def definitely um, increased in the last ten years or so by quite a bit. I don't know how you put an end to it though. Now I think it, it, it there's that many people. You know, I, I, yeah. I don't know how you kind of how you it's fix really, it. Yeah. It's uh, it's not a problem easily solved, I don't think, because the people, you know, most of them want to be there. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? You offer them services, but they're not gonna. Okay. You give them a place and pay for it, and they're not gonna. You know, a lot of them won't even stay there, or they'll just trash it. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of RVs too. It's not just people living in uh, in tents. Like there's mm -hmm. a lot of people who just got in the RV and yeah. park it on the street and live in it. See that a lot too. Some are nice. I mean, I think part of them. Sorry, go on. I was just saying some are nicer than others, you know. Some people are, you can tell there's a really trashed out RV that barely runs. Yeah. And some of them look like they're fairly new. Somebody just yeah. decided to put their money into that instead of a, an apartment or a, a mortgage here. Well, that's the thing. 
the, there is a part of it that kind of seems appealing. I mean, that's what all the van life stuff is about, and you know, all, all that craze. Um, you know, the kind of right. We'll pack everything up, and we'll, you know, we'll just live here, and we'll live by the beach, and we'll, yeah. and it, it doesn't usually pan out like that. It might be fine for like the first couple of weeks. When it's got yeah, a, I, I would think the uh, the bathroom is probably the biggest deal. Like there yeah. was, I remember seeing an article a few years ago about some guy that worked for one of the tech companies and was doing that just because he didn't want to pay rent. Yeah. And he converted a, a van or something, uh, and then you get a you get a, like a gym membership and you can go use their shower, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, but you not having your own bathroom, I think, would wear mm-hmm. on you after a while, you know. And it's it's just. It's just the kind of the not having your any land. I mean, it's it's not like you need acres, but like the land that you're parked on, you don't even own that. Yeah, you don't even have you know, some no fence around you or anything. Exactly. <laughs> you know, so it's hygiene's a problem. That's right, Burn Bear. But yeah, you know, for for a month or so, I get it. For you know, a year, ten years, whatever. You know, it's not like you can't raise a family there. Yeah. You can't. You can't it, it's right. no life, is it? Do you know what I mean? It's it's you, you just kind of like. You're escaping something, and then, but not replacing it with something viable, really. Yeah, yeah, not not the life for me. No, I'm sure. I like good. I like so, a good road trip. You know, I've done that. Like I drove to the festival, but uh, yeah, after a few days, you're ready to get into in your own bed. Exactly. No, that's the, that's the thing. The, the, that side of it, I kind of get, but I mean, that's always put me off because a lot of English people get like go over to America hire an RV and, and then you know especially when they retire and stuff it seems to be like on the, the bucket list of things to do um, and again it's never really like appealed to me I'd rather have a car and stay in motels or, or, or whatever I don't want to stay in an RV for a month or, or whatever you know yeah. it's just you want a bit of escape from it yeah yeah it's the same here a lot of a lot of people retire and do that you know mm-hmm. uh, but I think probably Probably it's the reality hits a lot of them as well. You know, yeah. once they've done it for a while, they probably get over that and want to sell, sell the RV. Yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe because I, I I grew up as like a trucker's son, so like all my summer holidays were spent like in a truck driving up and down, st- sleeping in laybys and you know stuff like this. And so okay, I've seen the reality of it if you like, you know. So so yeah. you're sleep you were sleeping like uh they, what they call rest areas here on the side well, of the we highway call, we call them, yeah we call them lay-by well you have like a lay-by which is just like a pull in off yeah. the road um or you'll have like the, the the motorway services which is like a truck stop yeah um but most of those you have to pay for to to park your truck overnight yeah. um so usually you'd go kind of off off the road a bit and then try and find somewhere to to pull up because obviously it, it was my dad's own business, so it, it adds up over time. Do you know what I mean? It was, it's, it, you know, if, if you're having to pay every night you're staying out. Right. You know, it's different if it's, you know, a big company and they can swallow the cost. But if it's, you know, every penny counts when it's your own business. But yeah, here they have uh, a lot. Of, a lot of states will have rest areas mm. uh, that are, you know, fairly nice. Uh, but California, for some reason, doesn't. They don't have mm. a lot of them. So you'll see a lot of trucks just pulled off on the side, off on off yeah. ramps. You know, just where they can find space and. Mm-hmm. Sleep in their cab, I guess, but uh, they rely well, on, on the, the big actual now, truck stops, you know, yeah. the, the business gas stations, yeah. Yeah, your trucks are a lot bigger than ours. You've got a lot more room. Like the English trucks, there's not a lot of If you sleep in yeah. there with these mad and stuff, there's not a lot of room. Like one of you has to have like the, the, the actual seats themselves to sleep in and then the other one sleeps behind and stuff. It's not. And then especially if you're going up to like Scotland in the winter and you go into like the far tips of scotland and, and all this and you oh. know it's, it's free right. we had, like it was it froze the diesel in the tank once it was that cold wow um and so we, we had to i don't know my, my dad went and like went to some chemist or something i got some for i don't i don't even know what it was i was only young and he got some like i don't know some concoction from like a, a local chemist and put it in and it like unfroze the um the diesel but i don't know i don't know what it was but yeah so i don't know how cold it has to be to freeze diesel but it was that cold. Yeah, that's that's pretty rough. Uh, yeah, wow. Never, never heard of that. Yeah. So how was the festival then? The you... uh, festival was awesome. Yeah, great mm-hmm. experience. Uh, yeah, it was kind of like a, a surreal the whole time, especially the first day or two I was there. Um, it was cool. So I, I uh, went with my daughter. She's 16, but she flew out, and I picked her up at the airport close by. And I drove my van. Mm-hmm. And then we camped in the van and I had like a tent that extended the back of the van, basically, mm. you know, attached to the back. And so you had a little extended cupboard space. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
So I go in, uh, took me two and a half days to drive there. Right. I went to the airport and I has, was picking up another guy that was that's from the area here that flew in. Uh, his name's Sean. He doesn't have a bear name, but he goes by Sean. I've known him for a while. Uh, anyways, uh, picked him up at the airport and we had to wait for my daughter to come in later. And when she got there, she had been texting me that, that uh, she thought Owen was on the same plane with her. And I, I didn't know he was flying. So mm -hmm. I, was, I just thought it was somebody else. I kept telling her, no, it's probably somebody else. Uh -huh. But uh, um, she goes, well, does he have a kid named Charlie? I was like, yeah, he does. Maybe it is him. And then, yeah, sure enough, when he got there, uh, uh, me and Sean were standing there. We see uh, Owen and, and uh, uh, Brandon from BearTac come out. So we got to meet them at the airport, and there was hardly anybody there, so it was cool, you know, I talked to them for a few minutes, take a couple of pictures. Yeah. So that was kind of the beginning of the weekend, you know, yeah. it was really, really fun. So you said uh, today on the stream we'd seen you, because I put in that I was, like, you were on here tonight, um, and he said, oh, like, I saw him at the airport, and then, but he was saying, like, he was, he was probably a bit grumpy when he got off the plane and stuff, but... Uh, uh, no, he wasn't. Uh, they were in a, it was great. He was in a good mood, and uh, we talked for a minute. Uh, Amy actually offered to take a picture. That was really cool of her, you know. Cause yeah. I know they've been flying with all those kids. Uh, mm -hmm. The kids were there. That was kind of cool seeing them in person, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that was an awesome way to start it. And uh, then we drove in late Thursday night. So we got there after midnight. And I see uh, who was at the gate when I got there. Uh, it was... Um, uh, Copper Bear and uh, uh, Busy Town Bear, yeah, Busy Town and Copper Bear were at the gate. I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't know it was Busy Town Bear. I wasn't sure who that was actually because I never met mm -hmm. him, but I knew Copper because I had met her. She's actually come to the a meet up here once, uh, of course. So everybody's seen her online, so mm -hmm. I knew that was her. So we got there late. We set up. When I pull into the camp, we got in the RV area area and just so happened to park right next to Candor Bear and his his crew. He had a couple of the guys with him. So we talked to them for a minute, got set up and uh, got some sleep and then the next day it was just kind of about preparing because I was uh, playing Friday night. Mm -hmm. So uh, we got a little, little bit of rehearsal time. Uh, hopefully we'll get to, to do some rehearsal a little bit more next year. Get it, uh, get ready for it because it was a little rush but yeah, I thought it went well, you know. It was a little rough on my end, but uh, everybody picked up the songs pretty quickly, and uh, all the feedback was good. I asked a lot of people mm -hmm. after, and everybody seemed to enjoy it, so it was a blast. No, I've heard nothing but good things about it, especially the music and stuff. It, it, everyone seems to really kind of enjoy it. Yeah, um, it was a good time. I know that was fun playing and seeing everybody uh, get up there and jam, and yeah. seeing everybody in person is a little different. Like I told Joe and, and Grungy, you know, both those guys uh, – you just realize how good they are when you see them kind of mm -hmm. doing it live, you know, on stage mm -hmm. in front of everybody. Yeah. Yeah. It's surprising, really, how many, like, musically talented bears there are. Yeah. I mean, if you think of any other group, you know, like, I, I've, like, before the bears, they, I, I knew one lad who was in a band, and that was it. Do you know what I mean? Like, the others, I knew people who could, like, play the guitar and stuff like that, but they, they weren't, you know, anything special. They just learned one song or something. Yeah. But now there's, there's just like there's so many people who are like really, and it's not just I can play the guitar, like really good. I know. You know, or, or play the drums <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, really I've seen good. that. There's so many people with guitars just playing around the campfire, mm. and then uh, even Sea Cow. Sea Cow get up there and ripped it up on. I didn't even know he could play guitar. He got up and played. Mm. A, I think it was. Uh, I don't remember the song, but it was it was a classic rock song. He played with Joe, and Joe was singing, and uh, he nailed it, man. Uh, mm. Just for jumping up there like that, it was the the uh, the light guy that they hired uh, was this young guy from New Orleans, but he be, kind of became a bear that weekend. I think I didn't hear the whole story, but uh, he had a great personal story too. If we can ever get him on here, it'd be a cool cool interview. But um, he got up and played drums on Sunday night. He was like like killing it. It was like one of the best drummers we had the whole weekend. So uh, yeah, a lot of talent, man, and. Uh, yeah, a lot, Burns, a lot of great, a lot of great guitar players. Burns said the artists are amazing too. Lost and found, hometown wobbly mountain bear. Yeah, it's it's just like it. Would everyone seems to be very kind of creative people? 
Well, not everyone, but there seems to be a, like more than a fair share of creative people in there. Um, yeah. and, and genuinely creative as well, not just people who can copy, like people who can, you know, make their own stuff, like play their own songs or, you know, you look at Anchor Bay, you look at whatever, you know, and, and the same with the cartoons and stuff, you know, it's, it's all original stuff. Yeah, I wonder if the whole uh, sense of humor thing yeah. goes into that, you know, and the creativity. I, I, it probably is a tie-in because yeah. that's one thing that kind of ties all all the bears together, right? Is just having a sense of humor, mm -hmm. being able to laugh. Yeah, I think it's everything. Thing. I think it, it's it's the honesty as well and the truth and stuff because you're coming from a, you know, a, a true place. And and I think everyone kind of, we're all kind of at ease. Do, do you know what I mean? We're we're, we're kind of like we wherever we are in life, we're all kind of like relatively content. Yeah. You know, so you might want more, or you might want to achieve different things or whatever. But we're not like bitter kind of like gamma people who are just trying to ruin it for everyone. Everyone just seems very kind of like content and and kind of happy with a lot. Um, right. So Unless I think they, that's yeah, if, they, if you are that person that comes to the light, you know, eventually, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Anchor's just come in, but yeah, I can say like I like to Anchor Bear and stuff. The songs he writes, the, you know. They're all original. They're all different. They're not, you know, it's not just that, that he, he just writes country songs or he'll just, you yeah. know what I mean? They're all different. Yeah. There's yeah. so many people like that in the Bears. Yeah, you can see he's got a wide range of influences because mm -hmm. he's uh, so good with the different styles. Uh, and it was uh, it was awesome seeing all the little kids get into his music. Like, they were up there dancing just like, you know, I guess a lot of them have already heard the songs and listened yeah. to them. But that was the fun part of it. All, all the little kids were up there dancing during Anchor Bears said. So did you? And then Jack go back, came in, and you know pushed them all out of the way. Unfortunately, <laughs> did you? Um, did you just play the Friday night, or did you play yeah. throughout the weekend? So Friday, uh, I we did a set of my seven of my songs, and then I just sang. Mm -hmm. I didn't play any guitar. Uh, then Sunday, I got out and played some guitar with uh, Grungy, and then we did like an open jam. Also, I got to play with Owen on stage. Owen got up and jam with us, and Anchor Bear was up there. Man, it was like. It's kind of mind blowing, you know. Like, what's going on? But it was, it was awesome experience. Cool. Yeah. I mean, it bodes well for next year as well because, like you said, you, you you've kind of learned some things that you you know yep. you're going to change yep. or, or slightly better or whatever. Yeah. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Do you know I mean, it's just the first time you throw everyone together to to get anything out of them is good, you know. So yeah. To get right. What right. You, you got to start somewhere. Right. I think uh, the tent was. It was awesome. They had a uh, great stage. The lighting was really cool. The sound was great. Uh, the crowd was good. You know, it was just everything came together, man. It was just a good vibes weekend. Mm. Yep. Uh, bowlers just put everyone's happy to crush in their own way. Most aren't trying to be what they are. Yeah, exactly. Everyone knows kind of like what they're good at. And that's, that's what I'm saying about being content. The, the, everyone's kind of like they've, they've realized you've got something. And that's you know all right i'll focus on that then you know and, and that's yeah. what they, they, they want to do and whatever that is you know what i mean but you know I, I can't play a musical instrument or whatever but i can like babble on here so i'll do this instead you know right. and that's everyone's got their own things you know I mean uh, bowler's got his skin color you know everyone's yeah, got their own, that's right. <laughs> own things they got their own talents like owen was saying you know black's got it really easy all they got to do is show up and not rob anybody you know yeah <laughs> There's a big thing at the moment with them, um, with Blacks. There was, um, I, I don't follow rugby at all, but there was um, England played South Africa recently, um, and one of the South Africa, a Black South African player, like racially abused a white English player, <laughs> right. um, and they they're not doing anything about it basically. And so there's a big, this is like big conversation in England at the moment. It's kind of like, well, the double, you know. Thing. Better, yeah. yeah, but yeah. kind of justifying it and and saying you know well yeah because blacks have had it so bad for so long and all this but it's it's kind of like open this interesting conversation for people, um so it's 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 fun to watch because people are very uncomfortable and and very kind of like even when they're trying to justify it they're still uncomfortable about what they're saying because they don't want to offend the blacks so it's yeah it's uh, it's fun times yeah well it's like they've been saying here for years you know white people can't be are the only ones that can be racist basically is mm -hmm. the the narrative that they they push to so keep everybody in uh everybody in victim mentality yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's the thing i mean it, it, that's the other side to it is it, it does kind of put the whites in victim mentality because it's yeah right it's, that's true know, too. But, it, but it puts the it puts both of the you know the, the, so it reminds the blacks of why they're victims 
Yeah. And then also promotes that the whites are victims because they can't say anything about the blacks. So everyone's kind of, no one's happy about it. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's very true. Good point. So they're, they're keeping them in the, in the, everybody in that same mindset and keep mm -hmm. us separated that way, you know, mm -hmm. keep us yeah, fighting yeah. with each other. Uh, versus chasing balls is gay. Rug rugby is quite a gay sport. I, I don't know why it gets a, such a, a like it's a man's sport. So rugby's just for people who can't play football. Like it's just there uh, because you anyone can catch and throw a ball. But you have American football over there playing, so you it's the same thing. It's, it's yeah, all sports are about something to do with the balls, I guess. Yeah, most of them. <laughs> uh. Well, Probably said rugby is super gay. Well, that's I mean, but in New Zealand, that's all you've got, I think, isn't it? Sports wise, like I think that's that's your main like thing. I might be wrong, but I are you talking about New Zealand? Oh yeah, yeah it's wobbly. Yeah. I say all, all the all I can think of because really, you're no good at football, and I don't know what else you do. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I think um, I agree. People live in massive sports are gay. I'm Mo. I can. I, I get, I get it. I get why people say it. I'm just kind of like in the loop of sports because I've always like had a really strong connection to you know. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like yeah. I can see it's gay, but at the same time I can't stop watching. Yeah. So it's kind of it's kind of like do you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. I've, I've been uh, watching more football this year than I have in the mm. last couple of years, just because uh, for the same kind of reason. Yeah. You know? That's the only sport I really really uh you know followed a lot i was kind of casual fan of some other sports but in florida football is the main mm -hmm. sport it's kind of like texas that's their it's big high school high school sport and uh we didn't have basketball teams mm -hmm. or even baseball teams in florida when i was growing up it was only football the, well that's the, it i think that they're the ones who are kind of the hardest to to stop watching if you like when it when it is you you've got this one thing that you watch yeah it's the same in england you know we, we have football yeah. and not you know people do watch rugby and stuff but it's it's mainly football and you know like you said certain states will have you know it'll only be baseball or it'll only be football or whatever and so they're the one whereas if the, the general kind of sports fan who watches a bit of everything yeah yeah you can give that up you, you're not invested in it like emotionally or anything, yeah but. yeah you don't have a you don't have a favorite or a team or no. anything like that. Um, but I mean, I, I don't know what sports is like over there, but it has gone very gay over here. I mean, it's very kind of like it's, yeah, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad here. I think it seems like they've tamed down some of the political stuff, but it's still there. Mm. I mean, they still have you know in racism on the back of their helmets and in the end zones and that kind of thing. But they don't mm -hmm. they don't talk about it as much. At least maybe I just don't watch the yeah. you know ESPN or anything anymore, so I don't see it. We're taking an uh, Wobbly says she didn't uh, watch ice hockey yet. Ice hockey is uh, is good live, fun live, but mm. watching on television is I could never get into it. It's a great sport to go see live, a lot mm. of energy, but on TV it's hard to follow. It, that's an odd thing as well because to me, ice skating is gay because we don't have ice hockey, so ice skating is gay. So then when I see like big burly men, like who can ice skate? I mean, like, how have you? At what point have you learned to ice skate? Do you know what I mean? Because if if I, I if I everything's skate, frozen in Canada, yeah, so they man. had to skate half the year. You know, that's how they got around. Yeah, true. But yeah, if I went ice skating at school, like I get beaten up. Do you know what I mean? Like the the to have these like big burly blokes who are like, you know, obviously tough, but they can yeah. all ice skate. You must have been like learning it as a kid. Yeah, they were all they were all figure skaters when they were kids. Mum's the best. There's too many young adults getting caught up in oh, the betting. Yeah. Absolutely, but yeah, there is a, a, a problem with the betting because it's again that's everywhere. It's advertised everywhere. It's it does flip too. I was like, you know, when we, were, when we were younger, it was you remember the whole Pete Rose thing, like bet on baseball, and now betting is encouraged. They used to really discourage having any anything to do with gambling, at least officially, but now it's it's way out in the open. They're promoting it all the time. Well yeah, it's, it's the same. I mean I think we've had betting longer than, than you are like as 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 kind of like a as a as a pushed thing. Um I mean as long as I've been going to the football there's that you can you bet like in the ground and you you know you have all that kind of stuff you know the 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 the, offer, the betting offices are within like are built into the stadium. Uh, okay. 
Um, yeah, it's not like that here. It's yeah. been they've they've kind of legalized it in the last four or five years, mm -hmm. I guess. And so now it's like every commercial is FanDuel or some kind of yeah. betting site, you know. Uh, I just want to address what Toronto Jew Bear said. I didn't realize this British Hockey League was where they had a black player mm -hmm. slashed a white guy to death with a skate. That was in England. And I've I've seen the story. I haven't uh, I haven't even looked. Yeah, into it. yeah I, didn't, um, I didn't either. But I I, I think. I'm, I'm saying we don't play ice hockey. I mean, there's like 10 people who do. Um, but it's not something that anyone... Because we have basketball here. I took, I took my lad to watch it a couple of years ago. Um, it just wasn't very good. It wasn't like... Because <laughs> I used to play basketball a bit. And so, so I was always like, yeah. like growing up like in the 90s, like I used to watch the Bulls. and You know what I mean? So I used to like... Because yeah. yeah. we had it. It was used to be on TV over here. Um, but yeah, it just wasn't. It wasn't the same. Like it, it, in a, a little thing in England, it didn't. It didn't work. It didn't like translate properly. Yeah. Um, Bowlers, as he bets nothing. Yeah, I mean, it, I had a spell of, of of like I'd go to the game and put a bet on like the first goal scorer or something like that. But I mean, he was only talking like a five or something. Do you mean it was just like it was? It was more to have like a bit a bit of interest in the game as as much as anything else. Do you mean you, you you get a bit more excited if that player has a shot or or whatever? Yeah, you know? but yeah. It's um no, I think it's becoming quite a quite a thing because I know my my son's twenty one now, but he's like. Two or three years ago, he said like quite a few of his friends were, were doing it on the, on the, the the apps and stuff. You know where they they'll, they'll go on and they'll they'll like do like accumulators, so they'll bet on like three or four games at a time, and and then you know they they all have to come in for the for the to win it. Um, but they were spending a fortune on it, you know. So it, it is it's it's so simple now, and it, because it's on on your phone, it doesn't feel like real money. If you're handing over yeah. your money to someone. And a betting slip, it, 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 you've got that bit more reality to it. Uh, Whereas on the phone, right. it's, just numbers, it's just it's nothing. Yeah, you never even hold it. That's right. No. Yeah, Burn I told versus, you. Before, you love the um, accumulator. Yeah, well, that, that's the thing. If you do, if you do like small money on an accumulator, it can come through sometimes, and then you know it, it's fine. But yeah, always one team out. Yeah, I was I was the same. Like I was. It was always like, like one yellow card away, or it was always something that you didn't you didn't get. All the, um, All of it's got to be controlled too, like rigged, you know. So if it's, there's not even you're not, not even really uh, getting a fair gamble. That's the funny thing about it, because you know the house is the house is going to win in the yeah. end. You know, just like you know, they're not gonna, they're not doing it to lose money. So, and to keep it going, they have to make money. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like I said, I've told the story before. I, I I had a friend growing up, um, and he was like he, did, he was like. Like Rain Man with with like maths and stuff, and he um he started doing like online poker, and he, he made a fortune doing it. And he was he was betting against like other people and stuff, and he was he ended up like he was going to tournaments and he was doing all this stuff. Um, and when he was like eighteen, he like bought his mum and dad a big house, and you know I mean, he was like he was really kind of good at it. Um, and he he just like one day just stopped. So right, I've, I've got enough now. I'll, I'll stop. And he, he moved to Australia and he, he works he works for like a betting company in Australia but he he now like works out the odds and, and all that kind of thing. Um but you'd see him at night and you see you know, you come in the pub or whatever and you say, you know, how have you done today? He's all, oh, you know, I've I lost thirty grand today. And then the next day you come in and he, he's like one forty. But his emotions wouldn't change. He wasn't because he, he to like he told me it was kind of like it's, it's just numbers on a screen. Like I don't. Yeah. If I, if I get emotionally involved in it, then I'll make the wrong decisions, and I'll make you know I'll start panicking or I'll That's whatever. So I have to just see it as like digits. Yeah. yeah just uh, so he was using it like sort of like a, a business, looking yeah. like a business almost. Yeah. Well, he was treating it like a video game. It was just like kind of. You know what I mean, like it, it didn't matter to him. He, he didn't like. He wasn't getting giddy if you won a lot, but at the same time, he wasn't jumping off a bridge if you lost a lot because he. He'd win it back tomorrow or whatever. He, he wasn't really bothered. Um, it's probably the only but he, way to do it. Yeah. Well, he was the exception because like they, he just like he, he was just like Rain Man, so he knew like when he's playing. Yeah. And especially because he's playing against other people rather than against like a computer or against something else, he was playing against like genuinely other people. So he can work out right. Well, the, the odds of that card is this and, and stuff, and then yeah. you know make it and yeah. As, as, that's he close to an education. I'm sorry, was that online or in a? Uh, yeah, he was playing online, and then he, he, when you get to like a certain, you must get like, 
like the betting side must kind of like twig who's good at it and stuff and then he started getting invited to tournaments and, and that kind of thing like to play in person but he never liked it because he, he, he couldn't it was, it's a totally different thing then because you are betting with real money you are betting like face to face with people yeah whereas when he was just doing it on a computer he was he was a lot he, he just preferred doing that i see it's that kind of person keep the emotion out of it yeah yeah no gr guerrilla warfare here <laughs> something yeah he, he could go to any metal concert new metal uh yeah no uh guerrilla warfare on the main streets of silicon valley sounds funny to me so how is silicon valley do you mean is it still like is it still what it was or, or are you seeing like the possibility of like a bubble bursting around there do you mean like with property prices i mean i don't really see people? that yeah no i don't see that at all uh i mean it, who knows but uh it's funny because i'm always there they're They've been back into building a lot more apartments mm -hmm. and stuff in the area. And I'm just wondering who's going to move here. I'm always like, there's, because you know, there are all these new apartments are three grand a piece yeah. at least, you know, and who's going to, who's, who are they expecting to move here? But they must be, uh, you know, it's an area that attracts people from all over the world mm -hmm. for different reasons. So who knows? Uh, there's certainly yeah, a lot of tech companies here still doing fine and uh i don't know i don't follow it too much but yeah i don't see it i don't see the any kind of decline that i can see you know physically yeah uh it's a lot of traffic around lately I haven't seen so much traffic and uh yeah business where i where i am has been steady uh people i live in uh an area with a lot of indians and uh Asians, uh, they keep seem to keep coming. So I don't, I don't know. I don't see a, I don't see a drop off anytime soon. It'd be interesting to see one once the AI does kind of fully, or not fully take hold, but certainly become a lot more used than it is now. Because I think a lot of the places like Google, like the tech industry, those are the people that you can replace with AI. They're the, yeah, you know, the, the programmers and stuff right. like that. You know, you can replace those. They're far more replaceable than, than manual work. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just maybe depends on whether that's what they want to do mm -hmm. because, you know, if you believe all this stuff you hear by the border and people, like, tons of people coming from India and different places, you know, they're, they're coming here because there's some kind of opportunity for them. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're still hiring them. Maybe, maybe the plan is just to kind of, you know, change the demographic and they're mm -hmm. using these companies to keep it going by you know yeah. propping them up with jobs i think it's always about changing the demographic isn't it? i don't yeah. think they want anyone to, i mean it, the, you go through the history of the world it's, it's always been like that there's, there's never been a place that's been kind of left alone long enough apart from like china and stuff and that, that's just its own kind of like little yeah well well their location the vast areas are cold you know i think that's mm -hmm. like same thing with russia you know mm -hmm. There's just like it's not as feasible for to move people there yeah. uh, that that aren't from those cold weather climates. Whereas here, you know, the weather's so mild, anybody could live here. Yeah. Uh, Burns says AI hey, can't give me a decent shoulder massage and not, make a sandwich. Not yet, Burn. Not yet. It will. On it. You'll you'll get one of those dolls and it'll uh, <laughs> yes. it'll do whatever you ask it to. <laughs> so what um. What mistakes, if any, were, were made kind of with the festival so that you'd, you'd be looking to kind of correct next year? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess mostly I was, I was, I kind of hung around the stage most of the time. Mm -hmm. So my perspective is really around that, that part of it, the music part and the performance. Uh, just like, like I was saying before, we need more rehearsal time. Mm -hmm. So, and we talked about that. Uh, we may come in a little bit early, a day or two, to help set up, do some of the projects, but also have some time to actually do some run-throughs because it was a very, you know, pretty much everybody learned the songs on their own and then came in yeah. and we had, you know, a couple of run-throughs and mm -hmm. in a trailer behind the stage, you know, it wasn't really even on stage. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it'd be nice to be able to do that without an audience there so we can do an actual sound check on stage, mm -hmm. that kind of thing um yeah i don't other than that i mean 
I thought it went pretty smooth, mm -hmm. all things considered, with the number of people there. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't see, you know, we went, there weren't a lot of issues. Uh, of course, it has to do with the quality of, of the people there, but uh, there were very few issues, I think, with people acting up or security issues or anything like that. Um, no, I mean, the, even might, the right bathroom situation I thought was, was pretty good because they had, you had the, you know, you know, the porta potties, the uh, portable toilets, mm -hmm. and then you had they had one trailer that had, uh, I think it was six different stalls, which had a bathroom and a shower with hot water in it for oh. the ladies, so at least they could take a shower. You know, now they did uh, they did have to kind of come and refill them, I think, or uh, clean them out once or twice during the weekend. But I thought that was a good, a nice uh, idea, and they could expand on that. That makes it a lot more comfortable for people who really don't like that whole camping thing. Yeah. Especially with families and stuff as well. Yeah, no, Kandor's reminding me of the the, the, just ending, the way my weekend ended. Uh, Grungy's dog was out there, and his, you know, his, there was uh, what it turns out. I think it was another a female dog there that, you know, he was kind of getting excited by because mm -hmm. he was being a little aggressive during the weekend, like barking at people. Right. He even snapped at my my daughter, and she'd been petting him a couple of days, mm -hmm. you know. So it was kind of weird. But so yeah, I'm, I'm like, like uh, uh, Sunday night. I had to get up early and go to the airport. So I was kind of telling everybody goodbye at the campfire. And I was standing in there talking to Grungy, and he's holding his dog on the leash. And the dog just lunged at me, dude. He just like lunged at my leg. I think he was just trying to hunt my leg, but I scared the shit out of me because I thought he was coming after me. I thought he was going for my throat. Oh, let's take it. But uh, dude, I pulled I pulled a muscle in my calf, and it took me like two weeks to get over that. So I was giving <laughs> Grungy a hard time about the medical bills, but <laughs> I didn't actually go to the doctor. I just I just sucked it up and walked it off. What type of dog is it? Ah, uh, man, I don't know. It's like a, I think it might be a Great Pyrenees mix or something. It's a big dog. Right. It looks like it looks sort of like a Saint Bernard to me, but it's not a Saint Bernard. Right. I, I don't like. I don't mind dogs. I like dogs. Yeah. I had, we had dogs when I was growing up, and uh, I'd have one now, but it, you know, it wasn't in this apartment. But mm -hmm. yeah, he was having a, a little bit of a stressful weekend. He tried to take it out on me. <laughs> Thing yeah. is, though, if you if, if you live with Grungy, you're gonna be you're gonna be stressed, aren't you? Really? Probably. I mean, he was. You know, he rode in a van with him all the way from Canada. Yeah. He probably was yeah. really stressed out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Lucky the dog didn't like jump off a bridge or something on the way there. But yeah. Um, just, just as mostly great parent is, yeah, it's a huge dog for sure. Uh, he's, yeah, he's a big, friendly, fluffy dog most of the time. I just think he was, he was hyped up. Mm. Probably needs to get clipped, Grungy. You know what I mean? If you're not gonna breed him, go ahead and clip him. I don't think I could do that. I've had, like, I've had a couple of male dogs, and I don't, I can't bring yeah. myself to do it. I do it, yeah. It's just, uh, yeah. yeah. Cause I don't think I could look him in the eye afterwards. I know it's stupid. I think he's a dog, but I don't. I don't think I could like. I don't know. I just think we. I think he. I think we'd equally lose respect for each other. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, you'd look at him like, man, you got no, you got no yeah, nuts. And he'd look at you like, well, you did this to me. Yeah. 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 So I don't. I don't think it would. Uh, I can see it. <laughs> Whereas it would. With a, a female dog, I love. I have no problem in like getting them done and stuff. But it, yeah, just a just a male dog now. Now that that may that that may be something they change next year. And I know they talked about that was not allowing dogs because there was a few out there, and mm. I could see how it could you know it could get a little a little messy, especially mm -hmm. with all little kids running around. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but uh, and I think one there was a. a uh, a dog that, or a person that got bit by a dog, I believe. I didn't see that, but I heard secondhand about it, and they had to had to get some treatment for that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it can be, it can get, uh, it can get a little hairy with the dogs there. You got to be careful on you because it it only takes one incident, yeah. Yeah. you know. Yeah. So obviously, the more dogs you invite or the more dogs you allow and stuff, the, the chances increase of that. And it could just be something and nothing, but. You know, the dog's just freaked out over something or, or the person's oh, like... Yeah. There's, there's a lot of, a lot of stimulation there. Yeah. Like I was saying, his, his dog is pretty chill most of the time, but I was uh, I realized what was getting him going is, you know, mm. female dogs running around he couldn't, yeah. couldn't uh, have anything to do with. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with that, Joe, but, you know, it's uh, the, the guys that make that decision will have to talk it over. 
it wouldn't surprise me if they did ban dogs just because uh yeah like mr Whit bear says um excuse me the other dog against it was a close call yeah could have been a lot worse that's what mm -hmm. i i heard as well it's hard to draw the line then isn't it because if you allow dogs well then you have to allow cats and if you allow cats and you, you know someone wants to bring a parrot or do you know what i mean and then it, before yeah. you know it's like Jeez. somebody's walking around with snakes and iguanas yeah exactly well you that's what i mean you can't not bring them if you're allowed to bring a dog you, you know that's so what do you what do you mean i can't bring this monitor lizard with me he's <laughs> on a leash you know yeah. <laughs> um joe spiraling now about dogs yeah. Uh, yeah, I tend to agree. I think it's I think it's probably better to leave my home. Maybe they could, maybe somebody in the area could have a little doggy daycare. They can you can leave your dog there while you're at the festival. It's a business. Yeah, because it, it is hard if you've got a dog because you you know you you need to if you're away for two or three days or whatever you know you can't just always leave it with a relative or, or whatever you know and then you don't want to put them in a kennel particularly you know so the, it is that and and you know if you've got more than one dog especially yeah. Um, but at the same time, I like say it only takes one incident, and then you you know you yeah you think, and, yeah and you want to right and, uh, that could ruin the whole weekend yeah. you know <laughs> I mean it could yeah. ruin a future festival though you know if, if something happens with a kid or something yeah. you know you, you, yeah. you don't know yeah. yeah you know so it, yeah. yeah the kids are a big part of it you know yeah. having the kids run being able to run around and not worry about stuff like that is a big deal. And they don't know, you know, one dog breed from another, right? And they don't know which ones are not safe to run up to and pet, and you know, which ones to kind of like just be a bit wary of. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing too. You never know. I mean, any dog can flip out on you. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, there are certain breeds that have tendencies, but any dog with the right stimulation can be a problem. They're still mm -hmm. kind of wild animals, you know. Yeah. Yeah, they are, and a lot of them are just protective as well. So again, if you've got kids yourself and you you've got a family dog, and then another dog comes over, or, or another person comes over who he doesn't like the look of or something, he'll he'll protect his his family, he'll protect it, you know, protect the kids and thinks he, the dog think the dog thinks he's doing the right thing. Um, I'm just trying to keep up with these comments because my phone's spazzing out, so it'll it'll freeze for a bit I and then just that. like. Uh, yeah, you froze for a second, but yeah. you're back now. Yeah. Um, oh, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, I just don't want to miss any comments. Um, so yeah, yeah. Well, just going back to like California and stuff. But what's the um, what's the lay of the land as far as like law and order and stuff like that? Is that because we we see a lot of kind of like you know California's gone to shit and it's you know it's a, almost like a lawless yeah. state now. What is uh, I think it's some areas like that. Um, I guess I don't experience a lot of that myself. I just try to stay away from that kind of thing. But certainly, uh, uh, there are certain neighborhoods and areas that are kind of notorious. You know, mm -hmm. some places you go. I'm always, whenever I go anywhere around and, you know, park at a gas station mm -hmm. or something somewhere, I'm worried about my, my car, you know, that's because that is yeah. a thing. People do break into cars a lot. Yeah, what's up, Hemp Creek? um that is definitely a problem mm -hmm. you know uh especially if you're close to like an airport or something uh the place, place i work used to be close to the oakland airport mm -hmm. and the stores that were close to there would have that happen a lot people would just pull up walk inside to pay for gas or grab something right. and in that short time somebody would drive in yeah. look in their window smash the window grab what they can and take off you know see that's one of the or one of the many downsides to the the electric car thing because you know if you're having to to leave your car plugged in and, and charge for 45 minutes an hour or whatever yeah. you know in a, just a like a sit area. And duck right there yeah. that's, that's a good point i didn't think about I've, that yeah i've seen a lot of them um especially in america where, where the kind of like the, the electric car things are like behind walmarts and, yeah. and just just places you wouldn't want to be but they've kind of like they've had to put them somewhere um you know they, uh, you know you can't help when your car runs out of charge particularly you know if you're on a trip or something so if you're having to go there 11 you know 11 o'clock at night or whatever you know you got a woman alone charging a car up it's not it's not a, a good situation really yeah no they're uh well they're having trouble here with the sales of them from mm -hmm. what i understand i mean i know they've dropped the prices on pretty much all the teslas mm -hmm. uh uh, yeah, they're just uh, they have their place. I think you'll have you always see them in the 
in the cities, but until they get the batteries uh, technology mm. better, it's going to be a problem. Yeah, they burn underwater. They have a lot of issues. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't hate electric cars. I could see like, uh, I think the hybrids are the way to go. Those seem to make the most yeah. sense. You know. Well, yeah, uh, I mean, the hy hybrids. Early, like, well, not early, but the start of the 2000s, hybrids were, like, the most feasible. And then they started switching it more to, like, kind of battery power than, than fuel. And then now they've gone to full battery. But So the laser hybrids, I wouldn't get one personally because they, they've still got too much battery in them. Yeah. Um, whereas the, the older ones, the ratio was better. Do you know what I mean? It was, it was kind of like, you know, the, the, it was more petrol. It was more, you know, petrol engine than battery. Yeah. Um, and they were kind of like self-charging, you know, whatever. It, it wasn't a thing. Um, yeah, I, I don't see it. I don't see it being the future at all. I think yeah, it seems like they aim them, they market them, and it probably is just part of the car business wants to sell more expensive cars. But if they made a, a ten or fifteen thousand dollar electric car, I mean, people would buy it. Yeah. You know, just to have, just has an extra car to get around, go get groceries in, or whatever, short yeah. runs. You know, you'd sell a lot of them, but that doesn't seem to be the, the intention. They, they just, uh, yeah. Like even even Chevy has Chevy has a, I think their most popular one was called a Bolt. It was a small, small mm -hmm. electric car, and they they were going to stop making it. It was their mm -hmm. best selling electric car, but they, you know, maybe weren't making enough profit on it, or yeah. I don't know why, but it's it's hard to hard to understand what the mindset is on that whole thing. Well, no, dude, because they don't, they don't really make sense either way. Because the 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 smaller cars would make sense. You know, you you've got a small car just for driving around town, just for you know, you got an old woman who wants to go and get groceries or take the kids to school or whatever. Yeah. And you know, if it's a second car, it's fine. It makes sense. Not if it's forty grand to buy one. Right. Because right. whatever you're going to save in fuel costs, because you still have to pay for your electricity. And then most with the, a lot of the charging stations now on the roads. They're more expensive than putting petrol uh, in yeah. anyway. So it's only, I've heard that too. It's, like, it's uh, only if you charge at home. Yeah, there's so no, even, they're reducing so all gonna, the benefits. Yeah, exactly. So you're not going to make your money back. Yeah. It's still going to be cheaper to buy a petrol car and drive that around town. And then and the the more ex the you know the really expensive ones, well they're just going to depreciate, uh, uh, you know, yeah. a, a, an awful lot, Jimmy, because the, the replacement battery packs are so dear for them that, you know, you're talking 50, 60 grand for a replacement battery pack. Yeah, yeah it's most of the car is the, uh, yeah. is that, no, I didn't drive a Subaru, no, I didn't drive a yeah. Subaru. Uh, Riverside Bears said the bull kept catching fire, they had tons of recalls, yeah, it doesn't surprise me. That's another issue, and then and also, uh, like, uh, one other comment here, demand it bear. I know Mumsy Bear said uh semi truck battery weighs eight thousand pounds. It's a non doable from the start, great big con. And in cold in colder weather or really hot weather, the the life of the battery is greatly reduced. So I think that's why I say I think they have their place in the cities for yeah. commuting short distances or running around town. Or like my my daughter's uh, you know, she's in the age of driving. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd, I'd love to have something small like that for her just to go back and forth to school yeah. with or something, you know. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, but then it comes down to the actual purchase price of the car. Yeah, and right. then, you know, the, it's just not, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't yeah. make any sense. You're still better off buying an old an old beater that you can work, work on yourself, you know. Yeah, exactly. Especially for a first car, because my, my lad's the same. His, his driving test is in a couple of weeks. Um so he's going to be in that market soon. I've I've told him to you know just just get you, you're going to you're going to bang your first car even if it's just like you know you you back it into a pole yeah. or something you know you, you're going to bang it. So don't go out and get something on finance or, or you know anything like that. Just get something you can buy you know in cash. It doesn't cost you much. It's not the end of the world if you damage it. You know and then work your yeah. way up. Your insurance is going to be cheaper. Every you know everything's going to be cheaper. Keep your head down for a couple of years, and then you know you can then start looking at cars you actually want. Yeah, and you know uh, if you're in, in a, any area where there's a lot of people, yeah, uh, even not just the, even if you're a good driver and you mm -hmm. avoid accidents, the parking yeah. lots people ding your car all the time. Like yeah. <laughs> you're not, you can't get to. Uh, my ex was like that with her car. She she just had a little Honda, but she babied that thing, and every mm -hmm. time she got a little scratch, she would yeah. just freak out. And I was like. Yeah. 
That's going to happen. It's just it's a car, you know? Yeah. Oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm the same as your ex. So I'm, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm always like the one path to the furthest end of the car park. And like, you're, you're that guy like taking up two spots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, so nobody can park close to you. Phones around me and everything. Yeah, it's, uh, but that's the thing though, because it, it is no fault of your own. And the problem now is the the older cars. If if you have a crash, the insurance company is just writing them off. So you you never or or giving you you know very little for them. So you're not going to be able to replace it anyway. So if you've got a, a car that you've put work into and you you know you've you've done, and then just some retard comes around and bangs into it. It's no fault of your own. You've lost all all your work, really. So. Yeah, yeah that's why they uh, park those things and don't drive them that much. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Now you kind of tempted to do that and kind of get like a, 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 a you know another car to drive around it. But at the same time, they're, they're meant to be driven. Do you know what I mean that's the the yeah the the joy you you own it's it's not a it's not an ornament. Do you know what I mean you should you should be you should be driving it really. But yeah, I, I don't yeah. Especially if I'm if I'm going somewhere like new, like in a city or something, like I don't, yeah, I'm I'm not not, not too keen on it. I'd rather just be driving around on my own, no one no one else on the road. Do you have like a, a nice car and then like a, a beater that you drive around? Well, no, I've got um I've got a, a Focus ST, but it's 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 2007. Um, but like that was. Like, like they, they only made this model for like 18 months so it was like the you know it has to be that age uh, um but I, I actually worked when they when they made them i was on the developing team or part of the development team with ford oh okay um so it was kind of like tiny 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 bit involved in it yeah. do you know what i mean like um and then would be was involved in like the testing of it and, and all that kind of thing so i know the car inside out do you know what I mean? and i've had a couple of them um but it's had a load of done a lot of work to it and, and stuff so it's just it's more than the sum of its parts you know what i mean that's right the, the yeah thing. but that's the only that's the only vehicle you own you don't so you well, don't got, drive around that much i've got another one but i don't use it um it's off the road at the moment but yeah i don't have a i don't have a third it's a, it's a shame because my wife can't drive so if she could then we'd have like a little one for her to go around in and i i do a lot of trips in that one as well but it's hard to justify, like, it's hard to justify two at the moment anyway, so I can't yeah. justify a third. Yeah, yeah. So when my lad passes his test, I'll be driving his car, I think. So you get around, like, uh, does your, anytime you got to go to the grocery store, do you drive, or can you, is that walking no. distance? No, no, everything's driving, really, from where I am, because I'm kind of like, I'm I'm not in the sticks, but there's there's not much around me, so you, you're always sort of like five or six miles from everywhere. Yeah. Um, but it, it's fine. Because I have to, I take, I drive my wife into work and back every day anyway. So I'll usually like call in on the way home if I, you know, need anything. I'll do the shopping like once a week and stuff. Right. So it, it's fine. It's just uh, and another, other than that, I don't really drive that much because I'll, I'll do that. I've, I've got to drive to like the, the auction and stuff for, for, uh, for work. But other than that, like I don't, and, and driving to the football. That's it. But um, my wife can't. Can't drive, but she drives me crazy. Well, yeah, something like that. I I, I kind of like the fact she can't drive because it's. I wouldn't like the thought, thought of her being on the road. Um, so I'm kind of like, like grateful for that. But it does. It is annoying when you've got a fucking driver yeah. everywhere. But, Always a little, a little risky. Like I didn't. I'd, uh, yeah, yeah. Some women are really not very good drivers. Yeah. There, there's that's definitely a thing. Uh, uh, it's both ways as well, you know. I, don't, I wouldn't want to drive in at night on her own. I wouldn't want to drive it into somewhere she didn't know, yeah. you know. And that, even even just going to the store and stuff now. Do you mean like there's there's most of the the, the the you know the bigger stores and stuff. They've all got homeless outside them. They've all got you know. And you, the, the the areas aren't as nice as they once were. Yeah. You know, so I, I don't want to driving up on her own, parking <laughs> open, and walking into these shops and stuff. It's, you, I mean, you shouldn't have to think like that in like 2023. You, you do. So you guys have a the homeless thing going on there too, oh, huh? Oh yeah, I mean it's not as bad. We we don't have the ten cities and stuff. It's it's more just like just doorways and you know stuff like yeah. that at the moment. Um, it doesn't seem to have been like the because we don't have the the fentanyl thing hasn't hit over well, here. Is that um, right? I was gonna say that maybe that's what's causing it everywhere, but yeah. no, it's it's just it's partly kind of we have like um there's like a, a drug called spice which is like mm -hmm. um. Similar, yeah. but not as it's not as deadly, but it's, it's similar. 
Um, and a lot of it, like Coke's still big over here, so a lot of it's that, and a lot of it's just this death, and, and just kind of like they've just fallen out of society. Because um, we have like quite a big um, like welfare state, you know, because obviously yeah. it's England, so everything's kind of paid for if you, if you want it. Um, but then once the, 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 it seems to have been since the, the the kind of the mass immigration over the last like twenty or thirty years, they've moved those into like the government, like the council houses. Um, so there's just a shortage of housing, yeah. and then you know, they, they, so they, it's just if you if you get kicked out of one, then you can never get another one, and you know all this kind of stuff. Mm. So yeah, it's people get used to that, and then when they get kicked out, they can't do yeah. anything else. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. They, they, they kind of get that you can go like cradle to grave and never work and never do anything and have everything paid for you know, in England. You know, you have all your healthcare paid for. You have, you know, your, your dentistry. You have your school. You, you have your funeral paid for. You have your care home paid for. You have ev everything paid for if if you don't work, um, or if you're on a low income. So if you then get to that next level up, then it costs you more money than not working because you 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 might earn like. Five thousand more a year, but your expenses are now eight thousand more than the person who's not working. Yeah, you know, having to pay for all these things. So it's it's, uh, it's not the greatest incentive for like the, the for like minimum wage work. It's not the greatest incentive for people to go out and get a job. Yeah, yeah, it's it. They they push that a lot here in California too. A lot of uh, services, but there's still a pretty good uh, economy. A lot of mm. Seems like there's always jobs, you know. You can always there's lots of jobs in that eighteen to twenty two hour dollar an hour range, you know, you can always find a job like that. Even the fast food places here pay fifteen to twenty an hour, you know, depending on where you go. See, that's a lot though. I mean it if you, it depends on your age, but I think I think the minimum wage is about eight pounds an hour, something like that, eight to nine pounds an hour, which is, with dollars is probably like twelve dollars an hour ish. Um, yeah, a lot of the cities here, California has a higher one than most, but then a lot of the cities have their own that are even higher. Like the city I'm in is, I think it's seventeen ninety five an hour is the minimum wage. Crazy, man. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if I agree with minimum wage or not, though, because I think it puts the, the emphasis that it, it's a, it's like a, it's, a, it's its own version of inflation. Yeah. Because it puts the emphasis on the businesses to have to pay their wages. Well, they're just going to make their products more expensive, exactly. so everything just gets it makes more, it expensive. more expensive for everyone. Yeah, it just you just want to pay in more for everything because yeah. everybody's making more money. Yeah. So it's it's you haven't gained anything from it particularly. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Burns says you must factor in the cost of living and rent. Yeah, I mean, I, I the rent in England is going up, but it's not like I mean the the, the rent that I hear over there that is like two three thousand a month and all that. That's well, the minimum wage thing is, uh, you know, that's meant to be like a starting job, you know, not mm -hmm. like your career. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to work that job, right? So it's supposed to be for people that don't have any kind of experience or skills or like older people that are retired yeah. and just want, you know, extra income. So it, the whole argument is kind of funny, but people also, have, uh, you know, there you have the you have the competition of the businesses, right? Unless they're just colluding with each other. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's uh, right. Twenty dollars an hour is nothing. If milk is five, it's, it's that's yeah. true. Especially if you're by yourself, um, that's why you see a lot of a lot of people, you know, you know packing into apartments with multiple other people, mm -hmm. make it work. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know if it's the same over there, but it it seems to have like bridged the gap a lot from like the the entry level jobs to actual careers, like as far as finances go. You know, so the, the because the 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 next level up, if you like, so the salaried work isn't every time the minimum wage goes up, they don't their wages don't go up. So the gap each time the minimum wage goes up gets smaller to like the to, you know what I mean? Yeah, so like an actual right. job. Well, right, um, yeah, right. That's kind of what I was saying. Like uh, all these places are paying like eighteen bucks an hour here, but mm -hmm. then a lot of the jobs aren't paying much more than that. You yeah. know, unless it's some kind of skill thing or or you're working for Google or somewhere like that, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, Amazon, uh, post office, UPS, all those places pay about the same. Yeah. You know. Which it shouldn't, do you know what I mean? Because it should be, you know, if you, if you, it should be rungs on a ladder, you know, so that the higher up the, the, the ladder you go, you, even if it's an extra dollar an hour or whatever, you know, it all adds up if you keep going up the ladder. That's right. Yeah. 
Yes, rents a thousand dollars a month in most places in the U.S. That's true. It's is the rents have gone really, uh, you know, even back in Florida, I hear that from people that are living there. Mm. Of course, uh, uh, te Texas, Tennessee, Florida, I think are the states that most people are moving to, the fastest growing states in the last few years. Mm. So, yeah. that's. I mean, my rent's cheap because they've never put it up since we moved in. Um, but my rent's like five fifty a month. Mm. which isn't you know it's it's still money but it's you know for that we've got quite a big ish like two bedroom house but it's like a big old cottage so the rooms are, are big we've got land at the back we've got you know it's on a private road it's it's in the middle of nowhere you know what i mean so it's it's not like a little crappy apartment like studio yeah. apartment or something, yeah. you know what i mean like that we're, that we're paying like next to nothing for we're actually getting you know a, a decent house you know we, we've you know we've had our son here and stuff you know so it's um yeah it's, it's it's worked well for us if you like but i i, I could i don't know I, I couldn't bring myself to pay that kind of money for an apartment so i kind of get like the like we were saying at the start where people you know well no i'll go and live in, a, in an rv for a bit but then it's getting back into society afterwards that's the problem yeah that's right yeah my friend was working for amazon she said they're lifting 50 pound packages all day yeah yeah, it's uh I, I don't think amazon's you know they're probably they're they're about saving money too so i don't think it's going to be a great job but there's a lot of opportunity there for sure they do they do a lot of hiring they have mm. uh they have this thing i considered when I, a few years ago i didn't try it but uh if you have a, a vehicle you can do deliveries for them yeah. just use your own car and they pay you a different wage but you know now with the gas Guess as expensive as it is, and then just car repairs aren't cheap either, man. Yeah, I think well, most so mechanics, you know, average, you know, average mechanics, like 150 an hour. Yeah. yeah. No, that's the thing. Every, everything's going up, and it's there's, there's got to there's it's got to stop at some point, doesn't it? You know what I mean? It can't it can't forever go up because people yeah. are just you know they're just gonna go bust. You can't you can't yeah. forever do it. Yeah. But it shows it's fake because it's not society is not leading it because no one can afford. For it to happen, you know, so it's it's not a it's not a a, right. a, a supply and demand it's not thing. Natural, no, yeah. yeah. Just like just like gas prices, yeah. you know, what what determines that? Who knows? They just mm -hmm. whatever they want to charge you, and it's you know, you you drive outside of California as soon as you get across the state line, it's a dollar cheaper. Yeah. Like just that imaginary state line makes the price, and yeah. the taxes are a little higher here, but it's not all. It's that's not all the difference. It's just what they think they can charge wherever it is you know location i think determines it yeah so it's, it's almost like they want everybody to have the same amount of money do you, do you mean and so that kind of like if if you live here the chances are you're going to earn more here so we'll charge you more for for things here yeah you know right it, again we have it with you know it, it's called a london wage so in if you work in london you you get more money than doing exactly the same job as if you work outside of london but everything's more expensive in London, yeah. so it's you're not gaining anything. Do you know what I mean? So, but, right. but people move there because they thought, oh, I get more money in London. Yeah. yeah but you don't, <laughs> and, and they're all living like worse than I am, and they're on double the money that I'm on. You yeah. know, so it's. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know because I'm not like I'm not down on it or anything, but it's just. It is frustrating when you, you you know you go into the store and you just see the prices constantly and open and stuff because you, you just think well there has to be some like I have to gain something from like from work I have to you know, do you know what I mean I can't you you you, you kind of like it's almost like you plateaued do you know what I mean and and yeah. like well how, how do I get to like the next bit or how does it become like that little bit easier but, yeah yeah and everybody is trying to get their most that they can mm -hmm. and so it's you know whenever you're getting a little bit more it's somebody else is losing out a little bit mm -hmm. so it's hard to hard to climb, climb that but they barely but can. owen's right when he talks about that because that that's just pushed everything you know like yeah. like cars i was talking about before the ability for people to just get finance on the car well you can just charge what you want then because it's just a monthly payment now mm -hmm. it's not you know it's, it's not money that you've saved up you know so if, if people if, if there was no car finance, no one in the world would buy an electric car. No one, because no one has right. sixty thousand dollars or whatever to to walk in and put down on a car. 
Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, I think that's true. It's uh, yeah, yeah, the loan, the loanability, the mortgages, because mm -hmm. uh, you know it was um, a time when it was really easy to get a mortgage here. Yeah. Uh, right before the whole the last crash or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, and they were giving them out to everybody. And now you have, have a lot of places that seem to be like, you know, last several years here, you heard lots of stories of people coming in and paying cash more than what the house was being listed for, you know, just mm -hmm. to get it, lock it up. Yeah. And I always thought that was like mostly uh, Chinese people coming in and mm -hmm. buying it to put their money somewhere mm -hmm. besides, you know, there. But I don't know, maybe it's a lot of it has to do with probably the whole BlackRock thing too, right? Just mm -hmm. buying up properties and then uh the rental market you know driving that if you can get that much money to rent a place out you know why not move yeah. and rent your house out you know a lot of the houses here too even in the suburbs have been split up into into uh duplexes or apartments i don't know if it was the same over there but around the around the time of the crash um it seemed like a lot of a lot of boomers were coming up to retirement in in, in england and they were basically cashing out the pensions and buying property with it um and so they, they thought right well, we've, well you know we're retiring at 60 or, or, or whatever so we've still got 25 years left so we'll buy this property rent it out the rent will pay the mortgage yeah and then i've got this asset now so at any point i can sell it if i need to otherwise i've got something to pass on and that just drove up all the so all the like the the entry level houses like the, the two beds and stuff it just drove up the price of all them and meant that first-time buyers couldn't buy them. So then first-time buyers had to rent them off the same boomers who just, do you know what I mean? So it, it kind of yeah. like, that, that whole market just like shot up. Yeah. And then after that, so then the next level of house has to become more expensive and, and so on. But Yeah, right. So it's like, it takes a big crash to get it to settle down. Yeah, no, yeah. you know, you wonder about it here. That everything seems so overpriced, you know, for mm -hmm. what you get for a million or two million dollars doesn't seem worth it but i guess uh it's uh you know like they say location is everything in real real estate so yeah as long as people want to live here it's going to be hard to combat that mm -hmm. but a lot of the people that grew up here you know they want to move in uh, out towards the center of the state where it's still a little cheaper right uh there's a lot of people that do really long commutes around here that's something i i realized when i moved here there's a lot mm -hmm. of people that do two hour hour and a half two hour one-way commutes mm. i couldn't do that more than you know about 45 minutes to put my limit i can't I, I it always shocks me how far away everything is in america and like whenever cause i'm used to like everything like like i was saying before like you were talking about the store and i'm saying it's like five mile away yeah but like, that to me is like a big journey do you know what i mean yeah. it's like i've got I've, I, I can't i can't be bothered doing it right. whereas in america like everything is like 20 miles away from from wherever you are you know it's 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 yeah. always kind of like if you need it's, to get anywhere especially california so mm. you need to get from one place to another and you you know that's an hour out of your day gone yeah yeah it was uh there's a there's a the local train or subway here is called the bart and mm -hmm. there's like 60 percent less people riding it because they've had so much just they don't have enough security basically so you'll you know mm -hmm. people ride in getting robbed they're seeing crimes mm -hmm. or people smoking crack next to them on the train you know <laughs> so like they're like whoa nobody's riding anymore like no wonder you know you don't take care of it <laughs> you can't just just let people run roughshod over it so uh there's still a lot, a lot of you know the car culture is still huge here it's not mm -hmm. going anywhere they can't they can't fix it when it is that spread out you know yeah. you can't yeah. have you can't have the public transportation like yeah. everybody dreams of you know it's just not feasible so cars no, well, going thing, anywhere it's kind of I, it's, I kind of get the idea of a city yeah. like having everything in one place yeah. and having a hold and then you know you, you have these scattered around the country but they don't it doesn't work and it's not good for you i don't think mm -hmm. but yeah as far as like the trains go and stuff they now they're building all these new developments everywhere of, of houses well there's no train lines that go anywhere near any of those places you know all the old houses are were built along the train line you know that was the, right. the point of the houses and, the, and then you you know you the factory that you worked that might be like two stops you know everything was kind of like built around that 
now they're building in the middle of nowhere and they're building retail parks in the middle of nowhere and they're building all this other stuff you can't you you have to have a car you can't the public transport's not not practical right right so yeah cars cars are not going anywhere <laughs> Yeah, it's the same over. I mean, like I say, even if I just go to the football or something, it's it's like I think it's eighteen miles door to door from me to the yeah. ground. For me to get a tra- well, for me to do public transport, I'd have to get to three trains. Like I'd have to go into the centre Liverpool, then come out of Liverpool. Um, I'd have to get a bus from here into into my nearest town, then from there into the centre Liverpool. From there out, and then I'm still like about three mile away from the ground. So then I'd have to get like the the bus that they put on from there to the ground, and then do all that in reverse. It's it's not yeah. practical. It's not, and that's like that's 18 miles away. Right. You know, and to a, to a major ground in a major city, and you can't get to it. Yeah. What if they just uh, uh, took all that money they put into the public transportation, and you know, give everybody a car or yeah, help subsidize car purchases or something like that. You need. They need to build more roads, so that's the yeah. one of these, especially here. Because yeah. again, like the the roads that I drive on and stuff, because I grew up in this, the, the, you know, within sort of within twenty mile radius is like basically like my entire life. If you, if you like, it. I grew up here, I have worked here, I have, you know, yeah. schooling, my family were here and stuff. Um, and it's all the same roads that I, I used to drive on as a kid. There's no like new main major yeah. roads being built. You know, the, the, there might be like the odd one that goes to like a housing estate and it's a dead end or something, but the actual kind of infrastructure—it's all the same stuff that was built in the '60s. And yeah. then how you know, the amount building of those houses, but not building the roads exactly. to keep up with them. Yeah, right. Yeah, same, same things going on in Florida now, where they're just you know people are moving there like crazy. They're building all these developments, and they don't have the the roads to handle all, all the traffic. So mm-hmm. it's just terrible traffic every day. But that's it. That's the most environmentally friendly thing you could do, is is to build more roads so people aren't sat there with the cars idle in sight and traffic, yeah. polluting the air, polluting I mean, all that kind of thing. I mean, I don't, I don't really buy all the, the air pollution thing anyway. I get like the smog thing is is like you know obviously you can't deny that, but whatever's causing that and whatever's you know, but as far as like damaging the environment like on the ground, I don't think it's because it, you drive down any freeway or, or whatever where it's it's not kind of like manicured at the sides. The trees and the grass and so it's all growing wild. Do you know what I mean? If if it was really bad for the environment, everything would be dead. You know, whatever never had a freeway, it would just be like like a you know, everything would be dead at the side of it. And it's not that's the most lush green stuff you'll ever see. Yeah, and cars are, are a lot cleaner than they used to be, you know. It's not like yeah. the seventies where everything was rolling around smoking out yeah. black smoke, you know. Uh cars are a lot a lot cleaner it seems to be anyway they've the technology for that is improved um i think they i think they got to a point like from i don't know maybe like late 90s to 2010 or something was like the peak car thing where they'd kind of they'd made them as economical as as, as possible really they'd made them as safe as possible yeah. you'd got as much kind of you know technology on them as you needed and so that was it. They should, do you know what I mean? And then they've they've then messed with them and messed with them, and messed with them, and now they're worse than they were back then. They, they they're not as reliable as they were. They're not as safe as they were. Some of them. Yeah. They're not right. as practical right. as they were. Yeah. Right. right. So they wanted chasing a gas mile is they had to make them less. Yeah. You know, lighter and lighter. That's another thing about those Teslas. They're super heavy because the battery oh, yeah. is such a big part of the car. Yeah. What's well, the thing? They burn through tires and stuff, you know, and, yeah. they, and the, they have to have special tires for electric cars, which are like a softer compound. They've got to be um, like proper solid walls at the sides so they don't bulge yeah. anything. And You're then, supposed to change them all at the same yeah. time, too, so you always have to buy a four, a set of four, right? Yeah, it's not. Anyway. It's, it's, and, and the, like twice the price of a normal car tire. But yeah, I don't think that's the future. I think soon people are cotton onto it, but. Yeah, um, I sleep deprived bear. He lives even further away from the city than I do, and he drives there, you know, for work. Uh, uh, I don't know how many if he goes every, you know, five days a week, but his commute is pretty far. I think he, he's probably got like an hour and a half commute one way. Yeah, yeah. But I don't. I wouldn't want to live in San Francisco either. Really, not, mm-hmm. it's uh, you know, the west side of the city out towards the uh, ocean beach is isn't bad. It's just more like 
uh, suburbs with old Victorian houses, but mm -hmm. anywhere near downtown would be a nightmare. Have, yeah, once a week. Have you, the, um, have you done the Alcatraz tour? Yeah, I went once. I went there once. Yeah. What did you think of uh, it? Uh, yeah, I thought it was okay. I didn't. I maybe probably overrated. Yeah, <laughs> it's just you know, it's it's kind of creepy, and you can walk around and, and with headphones, and you can hear the stories mm -hmm. about different inmates and stuff. So that was kind of cool. But uh, did you do the um, did you do the day one or the night one? I did the day one. Yeah, I the did. Night, I did night night one would one. probably be a little more well, I, yeah, entertaining. That's what I thought, and I I was yeah, I was quite disappointed with it really. Um. It didn't help. It was the day that I'd landed, um, and the flight was delayed. So, like, wh whatever it was, like, the, the the boat leaves for Alcatraz at like six thirty, and my flight was supposed to get in at like two or something. So I thought, right, we'll we'll go to hotel, freshen up, drop the bags off, and then we'll go down. And the flight was delayed, so the flight came in at like five. So by the time we got to the hotel, so and then we like we had to go get a taxi like straight there, like literally dump the suitcases and go. Um, so we we're all like, you know tired and groggy and a bit angry and stuff and so we, we went on this tour but yeah I, 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 was, I thought it was very overrated I didn't I was yeah. expecting so much more from it right. I thought I thought you could do so much more with it because you, you've got like the perfect setting especially at night yeah. and you can make it really really creepy but yeah I didn't didn't rate it yeah right because it's probably I guess like a, a state park so you're not mm -hmm. going to get too much from the state as far as effort goes bare, bare minimum mm. But yeah, I thought, uh, it, I thought it, was, it was like a cool place, but I just didn't. I, I don't know. I just I thought it would be bigger as well. So I don't know if if it's just yeah, like that's that was my thought too. It was yeah. a little uh, a little a little smaller than I thought. So I don't know if they're only showing you parts of or, or you know very small parts of it because you have the like the showers bit and then like that that kind of big room with the, you know all the cells in with the you know the one with the the fake head in it and and all that kind of stuff. Um. But that was it, really. I spent more time kind of outside, like wandering around and stuff, rather than actually inside. Yeah, they should have like a uh, you know restaurant out there mm -hmm. and docks for people to pull their boat up. But it's very it's very uh, cordoned off and protected. Yeah. Maybe there's uh, uh you know yeah like you're saying there's probably more to it. Maybe there's some under underground part of it that mm -hmm. they don't show you. It'd be cool to see. Yeah, I wasn't um I wasn't. Uh, impressed with that no well like you're saying too like what do you if you're as a tourist and you go to san francisco you go to what fisherman's wharf you see mm -hmm. the bridge you might go to the beach you might see like koi tower or something like that uh the park but yeah there's not uh, unless you're going for something specific i guess it's not a great sightseeing city well it shows you how little there is to do the first time i went there the reason that i was walking through tenderloin was the first thing to do on our to do was to see the the curved escalator that's in one of the shopping center things or, or whatever there's like a, there's a curved yeah. escalator that was like on our list of things to do <laughs> so, so, yeah, well, exactly. now, yeah when i when i drive there now would i because uh you know i didn't when i lived there before i didn't really ever think about the old architecture but now mm. you know there's a lot of old buildings there that could be whole part of the old Tartaria thing, mm -hmm. and there, there's a Palace of Fine Arts, which was supposedly one of the, those uh, World's Fair deals that they built and never tore down. But it's yeah. very impressive. So in that on that aspect, if you want to do a tour of like old buildings mm -hmm. and architecture, that could be a cool part of it. Yeah, I think I think that there's especially with the videos I've seen online and stuff. There, there, there seems to be a lot about San Francisco that we don't know. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, especially in the early days and, and yeah. to do with the earthquake and, you know, all that kind of stuff. It seems very, um, like, even, even that, I'm assuming you've seen that video, like, uh, it was, like, around the earth, it was, like, 1906 or whatever, and, and it's, like, from a, it's filmed from a cable yeah. car, and it's, it's going down the street, and, it, like, it's just bustling, there's cars everywhere, there's people everywhere, and so and everyone's, like, acting, everyone's just, like, driving in front of the cable car and nearly running each other over and stuff. But it, it seems so, so, like, advanced if you like for, for for when it was when it you know when when we assume people like that lived right so i think uh, uh the whole idea that we you know inherited this and maybe there was some kind mm -hmm. of cataclysm that wiped a lot of people out or they left or whatever mm -hmm. a lot of it was already there yeah they just moved moved in a whole new uh bunch of people mm -hmm. it's fascinating that's kind of the only uh i'm still kind of fascinated with 
of that whole thing mm -hmm. you know the how everything was built and what was here and where where you know the whole history of it is not accurate here as they tell us i'm sure and just just kind of like why they built it like that you know if you've got these cities that are, that are just starting off so you've got a very small population you're going to have very small kind of funding really um you know so when you're building like government buildings and city halls and and you know courthouses and police stations or, or whatever jails and the the are so extravagant yeah. they're so like you, yeah you like wouldn't... every every town in america has one of those crazy courthouses yeah. or yeah. You know, state capitals all look the same. Mm -hmm. You know, how does that how does that work? Where there's no variance in the architecture mm -hmm. and a way over the top, like you're saying. You know, some of these buildings that just didn't need to be that that big and fancy or or crazy. Yeah, just, it's just and and the size of them as well. You know, again, you've got a very small population in each of these cities. You know, why, why do you need like the courthouse to have you know 75 yeah. rooms in it and stuff? You don't you don't need that. No. Uh, so, uh, Taraju Bear says, uh, best movie ever takes place in San Francisco, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, 78 version. Let's check that out. Yeah, I've never seen that. Version. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, one of those cities that uh, have some sentimental uh, views towards it because I lived there mm -hmm. for a little while, but nah, I don't I don't go and visit very often. Yeah. I'm not saying. Same with local. It's a, it's similar to San Francisco, really, and, and you know it was like a, a, a port town, and it, you know it had the docks and it had all this kind yeah. of stuff. And, you know that was it was one of the first like kind of like international cities, if you like, because because of the docks and because of all that. You know we had you know the Norwegians coming over, and you know all the, and then it was like the gateway to Ireland and America and, and all that kind of thing. Um, and again the build buildings you know the the you know the old ones you know the the beautiful the, the extravagant stuff but it, it's just it's just such a, a pain to get into now and then and, and they've, just, they've just ruined it basically they've just yeah. made it like it's not a fun place to be you can't it's it's almost like sensory overload when you're in there you know you, you kind of feel trapped yeah. you you're flashing all these noises and all, and all this kind of stuff going on you just want to get out yeah no, I, I feel that it's like too much too much going on yeah uh mum's says uh pyramids all over this realm i know the pyramid the pyramids thing i'm, I'm kind of i go back and forth on because part of me thinks like well were they always there or, or is that like a like a dinosaur grabble where they just kind of like oh look what we found in the middle of nowhere where no one lives and you know that this is this is your history yeah. and well, we're going to make a lot of money off this but then another part of things well yeah but they were all over the world you know so. yeah i kind of think there was some to them because of the placement of them and, yeah you know like even ones and you know the, how they're related to the stars and mm -hmm. that kind of thing i've been uh i never was into astrology but the old world florida guy has been doing a series where he he breaks down each sign right and he like the way he explains it he, he's got a really kind of orderly uh way of explaining it so mm -hmm. it makes sense to me so we're kind of getting into that a little bit more lately just uh connections and how it you know different people have, have certain like characteristics that match up with your sign you know yeah no I, there's i think there's a lot of truth to it i think it's again i think it's one of those things that they've deliberately made ridiculous yeah um you know so everyone kind of like just dismisses it yeah um yeah you know, where, right. where there's a, using that using all that knowledge to have an advantage over most people right mm -hmm. yeah but i say that you know you know the the sort of the the bit in the newspaper where it's going to tell you if you're going to have a good or a bad day today if you're a Gemini, you know that doesn't that's obviously nonsense. You know what I mean? But the, yeah. the actual sort of the, the 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 proper stuff to it, I think there's a lot to it. But. Yeah, well, I was like, uh, I'm a Taurus, so when he broke mm -hmm. that down, uh, you know, you see the the characteristics in general. A lot mm -hmm. of them are true. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of them are accurate. And I, even uh, with other people that I know, I'm looking at that, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's that's it's how they are, you know. Yeah. So there's definitely something to that that affects your personality. And of course, there's lots of variables that go mm -hmm. into that. But uh, it's I think part of it is, is kind of like when you're born and when you be, like obviously like, but I mean like the the time the, the time of the year when you're born and when you celebrate your birthday and when you. Those types of things are going to have an impact on you on your life. You know how old you are when you're school, like because you're in a school year, but you are you the oldest or the youngest, or you know that kind of thing. Yep. It, it it all kind of like shapes how you're going to be, doesn't it? Yep. So, for sure. 
Um, where Florida is Sean Penn playing Spicoli. Yeah, he does have the Spicoli vibes. He's a cool guy. I think he's a, a vegetarian or a vegan, so he's he goes off on that sometimes. But I haven't seen much new stuff for a while, like like new people, because um, I kind of got a bit not burned out by it, but it, it was getting to the point where all the the kind of the channels I was watching were all just did. I think they'd like they'd reached the limit of of like new truths or whatever, so they were just regurgitating it all. You know what I mean? So you would yeah. watch like. You'd watch something, and well, you, I know you said that last week, or you said that like last year, or whatever, and you're just telling me the same thing, but you, you're presenting it in a different way. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I just kind of like got a bit bored with it all, but. I need yeah, to and a lot of them do such. Uh, one thing that keeps me from watching is they they do such long streams, and mm. like, uh, you know, you only got so much time in the day. Yeah. I like that when I'm dry, you know, I drive for work, so I, it is nice to have Owen streams to listen to, or mm-hmm. some of the long ones sometimes, but. They're going on for like two hours and they're not really getting to any points. Yeah. It's kind of, yeah, you just tune it out, you know? Yeah. Well, you do, and, and some of them you need to have the visuals as well, you know, so it's you can't just listen to some of them, you know, they're, they're showing you oh, things right. and, the, you know. The, That's right. Yeah, like know, that some... uh, John Levy guy, so yeah. watch him sometimes, but you can't just listen to his because yeah. he's talking, but what he's showing may not have anything to do with what he's saying, yeah, exactly. but it might be a cool yeah. image you want to see, yeah. you know? But yeah, yeah. he's in the look. Well, I just kind of like I haven't like stopped watching him as as in like I'm never going to watch him again. I just I, his content just got a bit samey. It was just yeah. like the same kind it's of stale, stuff. Right. Can... Yeah, he still does. Whereas I used to get like, the same kind of, kind of stuff. He, he'll mm. he'll come up with some new things once in a while, but yeah, it's pretty much stuck in that same that same vein. You know, it's it's a uh, it's a challenge, I'm sure, to keep it entertaining because you're oh, not yeah. just sharing info. No, no, so you're also I'm not knocking them, right? And it's it's just the I think I think especially something like that. So he he's kind of like pigeonholed himself into like I'm going to show you all the old world stuff, but yeah. there is a limit on how much he could possibly learn about it. You know, so right? You're never you're never going to really know the answer. It's yeah. like fun to think about and it's fun to talk about and look at all this stuff, yeah. but you're never really going to get to the bottom of it. You know, mm. uh, that's why uh, I like him. I like Blackfield. Yeah, because I I know he's kind of he's gone on. A bit about flat earthers and stuff recently, but his streams are kind of different. You know, sometimes he'll do a movie breakdown, sometimes he'll do, yeah. you know, just general kind of like political stuff. Sometimes he'll do, and and he's just ended. I just like find him entertaining. Yeah, I've never actually um, watched him, but maybe I'll check him out. He's he's on YouTube still. No, he's on um he's on Odyssey now. Okay, I think he got um he hasn't been on YouTube for a couple of years. I don't think. But he's, he's on. He'll do like a stream a week, probably something like that. But he's, he's on. If you he, he's on Telegram, so you go on there. It'll link to his things. Yeah. But they're. I mean, they're kind of like Owen length streams. Um. But yeah, he'll do different stuff. So you know, he'll, he'll just analyze certain things or whatever. But it's it's kind of like it's more rather than just like here's another old building. Like I wonder what they did in this. How did they build this building? You know what I mean? It's 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 different stuff. It's it's kind of like. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. That's. Uh... Yeah, I'll probably check him out. I tend to stay away from that kind of the black pill stuff in general, just because it's yeah. again, it doesn't like it's just complaining and they don't yeah. they don't go anywhere a lot of times. But uh, I know that's he's kind of stuck with that name. Yeah. So I mean, he does complain. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, he's just like, and he he, he he's very against the uh, the Jays. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, you know that and that whole thing for me, like uh, where I grew up, there was. Like, I went to high school with a couple of Jews, but I didn't know mm-hmm. it at the time. They never mm-hmm. talked about it. The only thing I ever heard about Jewish people was on television. Like, people on Saturday Night Live joking about Jews, you know, how much they were running entertainment or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I, did, I never had a real interaction in it, so I'm still kind of like, I don't care about, about yeah. Jews in general, you know? Yeah. Like, it's I'm, not I'm stuff that not, really I'm interests not. me, but yeah, it's, I can see why people get so worked up, because they, uh, I did have, uh, I've had a couple of Jewish bosses in the past, and I can see the, the tendencies that would make them annoying, but yeah. uh, in general, I don't, like, somebody's, Owen, Owen keeps it entertaining, you know, and he makes it funny, and, and you know, I've learned a lot from him about about why people don't really yeah. look, cause I've never gone down that rabbit hole, I just didn't, mm-hmm. I didn't care, I was like, who cares? They're just one group of people. And you know, I mean, what is? I mean, nobody can even define what a Jew is. You know, Not exactly. I think, uh, you know, 
being anti-Israeli is one thing. You can see, like, that's a clear, there's a government there doing things, mm -hmm. right? I can see that. But just just blaming Jews is kind of, uh, doesn't go anywhere. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it, again, it's a, it's a small minority of, of, a small minority, isn't it? You know, it's, it's, yeah. it, it is the people in the media or the politicians or whatever. It, it, it's just one of those things that they happen to be predominantly Jews. Right. So is it because they're Jews that they, they got into this or is it just, do you know what I mean? You, but that has nothing to do with your average Toronto Jew. Maybe, you know what I mean? maybe it should be kind of broken down more as like a tribe because a mm -hmm. lot of them aren't religious at all, right? So, but they do, they do seem to work together mm -hmm. And like to keep it in their group, you know, in terms yeah. of helping each other yeah. and that kind of thing. And of course, I'm those internal battles, but you know, there's Jews do do Jews favors for sure. Yeah, I mean, I mean again, like the cities in in here and stuff, everyone will have like a Jewish neighborhood, and they tend to be like the safest, cleanest yeah. areas. You know, it yeah. tends to be like the, the the kind of. Last time I went to America, I stayed in Tarzana. Um, and that's the, the area that we stayed in was the, the Jewish area, um, and I was I was made up with that because well you know there's not going to be much crime there's not going you know I don't have to worry about anything I don't have to do you know I mean it's because we we always we get like Airbnbs and stuff when we go over well, the police literally wear a Jewish star I mean yeah it's yeah. working for them yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah I mean fair play to them at that level you know because that's what everyone should do they, they you know they should be proud of of you know heritage and community and you know all yeah. yeah for sure uh there's there's lessons to be learned that that's kind of what i was saying yeah. is uh you know you can learn from the way they're they are tribal the bears can do the same thing mm -hmm. you know have, have that in group preference yeah and there's nothing that the, people see it as like you know you it's it's, it's almost like short-sighted or, or negative or something but again it's it's that's the way it should be. Do you know what I mean? But why would you trust someone that you you don't know and or don't have anything in common with and don't have any kind of you know? Yeah. Why would you automatically trust that person? Right. It's craziness. It is. it is. Yeah, and you learn the hard way that yeah. way. I was a a nice uh, unassuming kid, and San Francisco turned me into a hard, cold-hearted person. <laughs> and they could have turned me into into a a flaming homo yeah. instead, but. Yeah, that was that was close. It was close <laughs> to that as well. But. You go one way or the other. <laughs> Escaped. <laughs> Got out while the game was good. You know, there's a lot of. What's uh, up? Uh, uh, the good thing about city, just was before I was married. There's lots of beautiful women in most cities. You know, mm. so you have a mix of different people, but yeah, you have a, a good number of uh, attractive and smart women. There's a lot of smart smart ladies in San Francisco. Very. See, I never liked. Um, Back in my single days, I never liked like picking up girls in sissies. I never liked city girls. I always liked like more like village girls. Um, I, I just found them more like just more genuine. Like whereas the city yeah. girls were, were kind of like more like they, like they, they went out every weekend. This is what they did. This is you know what I mean. They, they yeah. get drinks bought for them all the time. They, they you know whatever. And this is just like how how they they spent the, the time. Whereas the village girls were kind of like genuine girls, and they happened to be out. You know, yeah, that was, city city turns you cold, you know. So yeah. it does the same for females, I'm sure too. They just mm -hmm. it's a different attitude. There's so many more people around, and you just get to where you don't like people a lot, you know. Yeah. Because of that, so uh, sorry, I was just checking a message here. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, city is not not for me for sure, mm -hmm. uh, long term. So uh, Missouri is awesome. In terms of that, you know, the rural area that they're they're in out there is more to my liking. So you tempted that I'm moving on. Yeah, so my I'm here until my daughter finishes high school. She's a junior now, so next year should be done. Right. And I'll probably will go back east somewhere. I don't know where yet. I have mm -hmm. still got a lot of family in Florida. Right. Uh, also, uh, North Carolina and Georgia. Oh. Okay. And. I have some friends in Tennessee if I and if I'm continuing doing stuff with music I may try to get closer to there right. just to be kind of closer to the whole industry yeah well Tennessee is not far from Missouri is it or is that no it's like not. grand scale of it? it's not I think it yeah. I think it's a border state I can't remember right now but I think it's borders yeah uh let me pull up a map here so I can see yeah I think it's 
Oh, that's the nice thing about the East compared to the West Coast or Western half of the U.S. is yeah, uh, it's a lot more condensed, especially if you're in like New England area. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you can get to D.C., Philadelphia, New York. All those areas are pretty close. Here, it's, it is a lot more spread out. Like it's you know, five six hours to L.A. Mm -hmm. and but from San Francisco north to seattle there's not a lot going on you got like you know portland that's about it yeah uh in between it's a lot of open area still the west is still like uh very unpopulated of course a lot of mm -hmm. desert and that kind of thing but yeah tennessee is uh actually is very close to southeast missouri where where the festival grounds are so you got mm -hmm. that whole corner you got tennessee kentucky illinois and uh what is this i can't, can't read that one yeah all that's very close to arkansas and then you're not far from like mississippi and alabama all that's kind of right in that area so i can see why it's kind of the center point of the population yeah in america because uh, that location is uh very close to a lot of different states mississippi river too i guess runs pretty close to there so yeah and no problem with like work and stuff like that with you moving like gym and yeah. you to get mm -hmm. uh i would think so um just have to find some, something local though uh with the is, missouri thing is tempting because you got op opportunities there for mm. sure um yeah i don't know but uh that's yet to be determined but so i don't know if my kid's gonna go to school or not but she's talked mm. about maybe even going to japan to go to college so okay. she, if she does is that uh, uh, then I'll just have to you know get a place for myself and not worry about her coming with me but why she may come with me too why Japan and her mom's Japanese oh, okay. and she goes yeah she's uh she goes there they, they go about once a year hmm. usually during the summer they'll go so she's spent quite a bit of time there she's fluent in Japanese now and uh, I, don't, I don't know I don't know why she's thinking about that maybe just thinks it'd be a cool experience Tokyo, as far as cities go, okay. Tokyo is a really safe city and it's very clean mm -hmm. and organized. Their their public yeah. transportation actually works, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think at that age, I think everyone just wants something different, don't they? So yeah. if she was Japanese, she'd probably want to come to America, and you know. Maybe but, so. Maybe yeah. so. She likes California too, though, so she may just mm -hmm. want to stay here. And her mom's kind of like a go either way. So if she whatever she decides to do, her mom will probably go along and just stay with her. Yeah, my lad was the same when he when he was looking at before he went to university. He was looking at um, oh, what's he called the 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 one in Utah, the um the Mormon fella, Brigham 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 Young. Um, there's like the Brigham Young University or something, or something like that. Yeah. Um, and he there was they did like a scholarship thing that they were promoting in England at the time. Um, and it was it was it was something to do with like sports. It was like a sports scholarship. So anyway, he was like babbling about that. I knew he'd never do it because he, he's, he's not like, but so you, you just kind of right, like, yeah. human, you know, all this. Huge, huge culture shock there. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, I mean, it seemed that I, I think I would have been tempted at that age to do it. Um, but I, I don't know. But yeah, that's just, I just think everyone wants something a bit different. Yeah. Don't they just want to, they want to travel and they want to kind of make their own story at kind of that age. But. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You just get, get sick of where you're at and want to yeah. see something different. Yeah, being fluent in Japanese is, is a huge thing. You know, if, she, if she's bilingual and stuff, that, that opens a lot of doors straight away. Yeah, for sure. sure. Yep. Um, what does she want to do? Does she know? She's the only thing she's really talked about is uh, like psychology or something mm. like that. So we'll see how that goes. Mm. I'm trying to get her. Actually, uh, that reminds me. I want to uh, connect with uh, Iron Man Bear and see if. I could get her interested in doing real estate mm. and then if she could do something like that she wouldn't even necessarily need a college degree you know yeah uh, uh, if she's got an interest in it so maybe maybe uh could work out some kind of apprenticeship or something like that with a yeah. local realtor well, that's that's the thing now especially because it's so expensive it's it's kind of hard justifying you know a, a bit of paper from a university because I, I was going through the same thing with my lad because he, he wanted to he wanted to go to university just to, just for the sake of going. Really, he wanted yeah. to experience it. 
which is yeah. fine. But at the same time, it's you know you, you're coming out with sixty grand of debt, you know, so you've got to go for a reason. You've got to be like, you know, uh, and the the kind of the field that he wants to get into, he, he does kind of like need to do the the courses that he's doing. So you know, fine, whatever. Um, but no, I was trying to talk him out of it. I was trying to talk him out of like, and, and you know, just go and get a trade. Just go and, but you know, if he doesn't want to do it and it's not going to make him happy, then you know, whatever. Yeah, that's what you just gotta tell. I mean, you can't you can't live for him. You just no. have to give the best advice you can. I tell her the same thing. I'm like, yeah, yeah you can go to college if you want, but you need to do it for a reason and don't get into debt. Uh -huh. So she's a she's a pretty good student. She's taking some advanced classes, and uh, you know, maybe she'll get some scholarships here and there. Yeah. It, it's true it's all you can do for him I mean like, he's the only one like because they share a house and stuff there and he's the only one who works and he's he's, he's got two jobs while he's at uni um, like he's, he's got a girlfriend she doesn't work and so, so I mean her, her parents pay for a lot of her, her stuff um, but his, his friends stuff, they just live off student loans and stuff they don't like you know so, whereas he's got he's put his in the bank because you get it anyway it, it's just like a, it's like a given thing Grant, yeah. Um, so he, he, he's, you know, he's, he's, he'll either have to pay it all back straight away, or you pay it back with interest. So he's put it in the bank; it's there if he needs it. But he's working and kind of paying his own way, and we're helping him out a bit. And so, you know, so it's it's trying trying to do it as, as as kind of cheap and as practical as possible if you are going to do it. But yeah, yeah, and I think uh, there are, of course, there are still some things that you that college is good for. You just got to make sure you're doing it. Yeah. For the right reason, and it's going to benefit you, and not just put you in a hole. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a you thing. When out, I went you, know, to... you start out, people. A lot of people start out with like uh, community college here, so it's a lot mm -hmm. cheaper, and you get a lot of those basic courses out of the way. And then, if you mm -hmm. want to go to university, you know, you can do that to finish up. Well, when I went, it was it was free to go um, in England. You, you, basically, if you if you did a if you did certain degrees, you have to pay like. A grand or two grand, like extra to to do like certain like if you did like a sports degree or something, yeah. you'd have to pay like two or three grand. But if you did like a normal degree, um, it was it was basically free. So you got the student loan if you wanted it. If you didn't want it, then whatever. Um, but now the 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 government then brought in this thing where they said right, you can charge, but you can't charge more than I think it's twelve thousand a year. Um, so of course all the universities just charge twelve thousand a year. Yeah. So. If you're doing a three-year course, that's thirty-six grand plus your loans, plus you, you know, it, it, it does your work, works out about well, fifty or sixty grand you come out with at the end in, in debt. Yeah, but, but you get those living expenses while you're there. Exactly. Well, so, so say he's, he's he's got a house there that I mean he, he shares, but they again they get ripped off with that. It's it's I think he's paying that's about five hundred a month or something, and there's like eight of them sharing um like a, a house, you know, so the the they're, they're making a fortune off them. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's what it's come down to. It's just like a, such a so many people just raking it in off the yeah. schools, you know. And there's uh, uh, the uh, you know even the the professors, the top of the school, you know, it's just so much money involved. Yeah, uh, fucking face is twelve grand a semester here. It's it's, just, it's crazy because you it doesn't cost that much. So you know you can't you if you if you ask them to sit down with a piece of paper and say right write down why you're charging this you couldn't because it, it there's no way university costs that but school is free yeah. like it, it doesn't like it doesn't make any sense yeah yeah it's just like it like you said it just becomes such a, a money making racket and people mm. yeah whenever somebody starts is making money and you want to make a change you're going to lose going to have that pushback or hard to uh, be a hard change and it's yeah it's big money big money now you think about these bigger schools that get all this money from sports too, like the college football is a big deal here, and the the television contracts and the money they get for playing. Like yeah. the smaller schools, they'll go play a team that's a lot better than them, and they know they're going to get beat, but they're getting you know several hundred thousand dollars goes to the school just for playing that game. Uh, uh, some of the students benefit from that, but most of them don't. You know, well, I say no, you you couldn't possibly pay it back to the students you know i mean you wouldn't be enough to to you couldn't do enough with it if you like do you know what i mean to justify the money you couldn't build enough new buildings with it you couldn't build enough like whatever yeah, you'd still right. be making it's, it's like what is the cost for it yeah yeah what is it what's the justification right yeah
it's but just, no, I mean, uh, it's that it's like you know. I think it's going to school uh, is more moments more important than the connections you make. Yeah, there's a lot of people who get out of school. They go work for somebody that they know. You know, mm-hmm. somebody they've met at school or somebody, some family friend or something like that. So. Yeah. Well, that's the, 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 the what he wants to do. That's part of the thing. It's the networking and it's the getting yeah. to know, and, it, and then yeah. it's like the, the apprenticeships that then lead off it. Yeah. Um. So that's that's kind of why he has to do it to so just you know, but. And say all you can do is kind of advise him, and, and he seems to kind of like he, he gets it. So he, he's, you know, he's doing like making the best of it that he, that he can, if you like, you know. And, and if it, if it works out for him, great. I mean, it's a good decision. But uh, the problem is, if like say if you're just going for the sake of it, you're just going for like that three years of freedom and all, and all this, you'll be paying for it for the rest of your life. You know. So yeah. You're always going to have that debt hanging over you. Yeah, it's no fun. I don't have a. I haven't even had a car loan in years. I don't, yeah, don't like having that debt. No. Got right now, I got a, a credit card with like a seven hundred dollar limit on it, and I don't, I don't even use it. No, I, I've got a credit. Card. I use my credit card all the time, but I, I pay it off in full every month. It's just easier, like it, it, yeah. you know, rather than having it all from different. Like you know, I, I need to use that card today from that account and stuff. Just go one, use one you, and, yeah. and you get like um like a I don't know, not point five percent cash back on right. it or something. So at the end, like end of the year I got like 50 quid from them or something yeah. but um yeah I, I couldn't imagine like having that hanging over you do you know what I mean like whereas mm. you know when you when your paycheck comes in and you think right well I'm paying that 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 and that and then all this rest of it is going on interest yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's just <laughs> yeah it's just a horrible yeah that's uh, one of those um, that like you can't get away from that that's, that's no. some of the loans you can walk away from but the student mm. debt you can't no no I'll tell you and and even the ones you can walk away from it, you know, it, it still messes you up. You know, they, they, they'll do like a, a, a settlement thing for you, or they, they have they have government schemes here for people who are in like a lot of debt, um, where you apply for like such a thing, and then it, it but it puts like a black mark against your name. So then it, you and it, you some jobs won't employ you if you've got these these black mark against your name. So because they'll count it as like well you can't be trusted and you can't be responsible and stuff. So we're, we're not going to employ you. You know, so it's. Yeah. They're all um, again. It, it's it's just to with a conspiratorial hat on. It just seems to be a, a way of just keeping everybody down. Like it's just the, the ultimate kind of like, yeah, we'll pay you more, but we'll charge you more for everything, and we'll charge you interest on top of that. And it's just it's not. Yeah, a, and I think it just, it just kind of feeds into itself. You know, it becomes a monster. It can't stop. You know. Yeah. It's a, it keeps rolling and rolling until you do have a big event that crashes mm-hmm. it down. That's the only way to reset it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, yeah, it's hard. There's a housing market, uh, cars are way overpriced. It just seems like everything is way more, way overvalued from what it should be. Yeah. Uh, sea level says, if you pay them off, credit cards are good for fraud protection. Yeah, they are. And again, that's one of the reasons I'll do it. So it's because if you if you spend like anything on a credit card, you automatically get all the insurance, you get all that kind of thing, so you, you can yeah. claim it back if there's anything any problems with it, and you get even with like if if you buy like a TV on it or something, and the, you know the warranty company don't want to do anything technically, they could because you use your credit card, the the bank kind of like has a like a, a dog in the fight if you like, so they you can like claim back from them instead and stuff. Um. But yeah, I mean, it, all all it does is it shows that we'll, the the kind of the Bertaria thing is right, you know, to to kind of like keep it small, keep it debt free, keep it local, keep it, you know, and and kind of keep it in house like like the Jays do. Yeah. Um, because that you know, all these communities that we kind of like looked down our noses on a few years ago, you know, the same with the Muslims and stuff like that, where you kind of see them and they're all kind of like they all stick together and they don't. In England, there's a lot of Muslim communities. A lot of towns are just Muslim now. Um, and well, yeah, I mean that's what that's that's what happens. Is uh, most, you know, Caucasians are afraid to to act that way, but that's yeah. how everybody else does it. Like yeah. Indians are notorious for mm-hmm. coming into a business and then just hiring all their friends mm-hmm. and family. You know. And if you go in, like you can see it at fast food restaurants, she'll go into one and like all the employees will be Hispanic. Yeah. Or some some areas in the U.S. you go into a place and like they'll all be black. Mm-hmm. You know. And it, you you know it's it's not just a natural thing. It's a lot of it has to do with okay, the manager, 
hires their their friend or somebody they know mm -hmm. and they hire somebody they know the place i work at now like they don't hire anybody unless somebody knows them you know mm -hmm. they don't just put out ads usually it's always a friend of a friend or a friend of an employee or a brother or somewhere like that yeah. you know i do the same i mean I've, I've never had to employ anyone or anything but i i do the same thing if i did you know i don't want yeah. it, makes, it, makes sense. it makes sense it's just been yeah. kind of shamed out of doing that but yeah. it's it makes a lot of sense to you know hire people that you trust so you can relate to well so you, you you want to hire people you can trust you want to hire people who you know are going to be kind of good at the job all these things make sense i've started i've, I've been watching um over the last week i've been watching all the police academy movies okay cool so i watched them i'm up to number six i watched number six last night um but the premise of police academy from the the, the first one was that they, they'd open the doors to diversity if you like yeah so they got all these people that would never have ever made it on the police force that's right and they yeah. brought them in and going to train them up um and the, you know this is like the future this is like you know and and the the older people within the within the academy are saying well, well this won't work we don't want these people on the force we don't and they're almost like shamed out of it if you like um yeah. but that that's these people shouldn't be police officers right. do you know what i mean and that's that's what we've got now in you know we've because of diversity and stuff we've got you know fat policemen yeah. and women we do. And, I've, i was gonna say i've noticed that lately too just uh some of the highway patrolmen or mm. more female cops you know and yeah yeah and, and, and like, it, it, it uh, that's, is what it is i guess yeah but you know again if, if you could just hire who was best for the job you know mm. everyone it just it just makes sense you know everyone everyone would just be better off then yeah everybody has their role to play right yeah because it doesn't do them any good either jimmy I mean, it doesn't do them ultimately it doesn't you know it won't do the confidence any good it won't do them any good in the job you know if, if they're just hired because of the color of the skin or because of the sex or, or whatever yeah. you know you know how can how can you be happy in that job do you mean it just it's yeah, it's funny too i was thinking about that how they advertise some of the businesses out here that be you know black owned business or women owned yeah. business and you know depending on who who's who you're advertising to that's not always a positive thing they might mm -hmm. see that and avoid that company because of it you know mm -hmm. they they assume that every it's like a virtue signal that everybody wants to hear yeah. but if i see a company that's all women depending on the business i may not mm -hmm. want to pick that business you know to help me out or that service but I'd say in the, in the in the good old days, if you like, they would advertise the the merits of their business. You know, like why why you should come to and use this business because it's better than the competition. Now it's just you should use this because you're racist if you don't. Yeah, and that's that's not a selling point. <laughs> I mean, that, right, that doesn't exactly. Include it. Yeah, yeah, that was funny. They kind of give you some info that you can use to be more discriminatory. You know, <laughs> exactly. Um. <laughs> Right, well, I've had you on for a couple of hours. I don't want to keep you too long. Um, is there anything else you wanted to, to touch on? Or? Uh, I don't think so. It looks like Grungy just showed up. What's up, Grungy? Had a, uh, we were talking about the festival earlier. Uh, he did a great job. Man. He's, he's really good uh, live as well. Really good mm. singer and guitar player. So, yeah, you know, seeing these guys in person is a whole different experience. Mm. Anchor Bear was great live. He's a great performer you know uh everybody was pumped to see him and he's a good drummer i didn't i didn't realize he was such a i guess he started out as a drummer but right. he got up and played drums with us with uh owen and stuff, stuff too yeah hmm. cool. yeah so yeah just uh wrap it up i just say man uh uh good talking to you again uh cool. glad to share that experience looking forward to next year man and Oh yeah, I'm, I'm finally working on some new music. I've been kind of really busy since the festival, but mm -hmm. uh, I I ordered some CDs, like 50 copies of just a couple of new songs, and then most of the songs I put out already. Right. Just for some people that might want one, and then I'm gonna uh, be posting some stuff uh, probably on Bandcamp if somebody wants to get uh, some digital copies. Right. Where, yeah, where new music, people, new music coming. Where can people reach you or or, or to hear your stuff? Yeah. Uh, I'll be posting on that because right now I don't have anything, but it's just going to be, uh, you'll probably just be able to link through my Instagram mm -hmm. to get to it. Uh, um, uh, so far I've been just making videos and putting it up on, on YouTube, but I think uh, uh, in the next 
couple of months. It'd probably just be more audio releases. Mm -hmm. And then uh, hopefully working on some new songs that we can play at the festival next year. There's a, a Telegram musician group where we're putting in some ideas for parody songs and that kind yeah. of thing. So, yeah. Are you gonna, have you got but, any that you're going to play before the festival or are you saving them all for the festival? Uh, uh, I'm sure there'll be some we'll, we'll get out there before then. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll, we'll, some of that will be released by then and we can get it together. I know there's, there's several people that are working on songs right now, so it's just a matter of finishing them up and putting them out. Cool. And I think that's a good idea if we get them ahead of the festival, then people are familiar with them, you know, when we do yeah. play them. It's not like a new experience. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you, you want them. I mean, the, 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 I think the, the main... Do you remember when Owen did like the last tour when he he did like Albuquerque and he did like all, all the, like whatever that I can't remember what it was called whatever that tour yeah. was, but he'd done a lot of the jokes like when he was re when he was practicing them and, and honing them and stuff he'd done them on the stream, um, and so when he came to the thing like all the audience had already heard the jokes which is good and also bad because you don't get that kind of like natural laughter if you like at, at hearing a new joke but you get the familiarity laughter. Um, whereas this year he's kind of like kept all his jokes back and then done his his show. So yeah. with the music, you, you, you kind of like you want you want people. It's it's slightly different with music and comedy, but you want people to be familiar with the songs. But you also want to kind of like maybe throw one or two in that people haven't heard before. And yeah, yeah, it's always fun. There's some new stuff. But yeah, uh, I was a little concerned about that with Owen when he was doing his special. But you know, he threw in some stuff that he like he said he kind of came up with that day day of the show uh that nobody had heard you know and then he's been he was able to keep some stuff back yeah it was it was yeah that was I, we didn't really touch on that but that whole his whole show was really uh another great experience man the energy in the tent was awesome mm. you know you could see he was really pumped up and into it especially in the beginning come out pounding his chest uh yeah that was cool man it, it does cool. seem to have like I think I think it's the community, the the size and the the quality of the community is is kind of like hit him like or he's kind of like realised just how good it is like since yeah. the festival because um, I think he, he you know he knew before him, but there's still like he, he probably had the least contact with the bears if you like right, um, right. you know and then to, but to be part of it and to be you know. He's seen like no, actually, this is freaking awesome. Yeah, it's, and his streams got to be as, as surreal and cool as it was for all of us yeah. being there for him. It's got to be yeah, a whole other level. He's like, oh, look, yeah. I created this yeah. thing and it's real, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure he was. Yeah, he. You can tell he hung out a lot, man, and uh, mm. he was he was enjoying himself. Yeah. His mom had a great time, from what I could tell, and uh, family and the kids are running around doing all sorts of stuff. So yeah, it was. Really cool for everybody involved. Yeah, he, he seems to have. Um, I say stream since the festival. He seems it, it seems a lot more personal to him now. Do you know, do you know what I mean? Like he, he seems like he's he's kind of like fully engaged, if you like. Whereas you know, yeah, well, it, yeah it made it more and, more made it more real. Yeah, exactly. you know, Seeing all those people and it coming together. Yeah. yeah. So now he knows what the names on in the chat look like, and he knows yeah. you know what they're like and stuff. So it's it's more of a there's there's less of that distance if you like. Yeah. So yeah, the the next one should be should be great. It should be. I mean, they're only going to get better, aren't they? They're only going to get like you're only going to hone it and and get better and better and and you know more yeah. people are going to bring things to the table and stuff. So it should it should be um should be amazing. Yeah. I'm I'm hoping to get to one in a couple of years, but it's just uh yeah, we got to get you in on that roast if they ever do it. Yeah. Yeah, you'd be good. <laughs> you'd be good roasting, roasting uh, anybody up there. And I was, you know, we could even do like a just the bears roasting bears kind of thing. That would be entertaining. That would be cool. Yeah, yeah. You just draw tickets and then yeah. Be, um, <laughs> Who gets it? Who gets it? Hopefully, I get Joe. But you know, I'm, I might even uh, I might even bribe a few people just so I can I can roast him for a bit. <laughs> Yeah, Joe was Joe was uh, a big part of that man. He was uh, I was worried about him at one point. I was he was you know because he was running around trying to organize everything, but he's also like playing a, a lot, you know. And he was getting on stage at one point, and I was like, Joe, are you all right, man? I haven't seen you like eating or drinking any water. You're just like going, he's barely sleeping, you know. 
but uh, he he did a he did a great job. Yeah, I'm, I don't praise him very often, but yeah, from from everything I've seen and heard, it seems yeah. like he, he kind of like he was he was the glue on stage, if you like that. They kind of like organized everybody and and put everyone together. Yeah, he was, he was making sure it was all right. That was a lot of people. There was a, a whole crew of guys there, kind of doing everything, but he had a big part of it, especially the musical direction and getting everybody on stage and all that. Yeah, hopefully he's left the chat so he didn't hear me say that. But. <laughs> Yes, sir. What's up, right. Simone, Poppy? Well, we're about to wrap it up here, Poppy. Joined in late. You have to watch the replay. Yeah, you have to watch the replay. It's not a. We're not restarting for you. Yeah, Barry Pelagic, He did play barefoot. He was barefoot the whole time, from what I remember. I don't think I saw him wearing shoes any the whole weekend. Mm -hmm. Him and him and Go to Bear just walking around like a couple of savages with no shoes on. Well, Go to Bear. Be wearing sandals and stuff, whatever they, whatever they wearing. You think so? But he's he's been he's replaced his Palestinianism with his Godaism, so he's all about that now. Yeah, Always yeah. I think that's a bit of a ploy, really. I think it's um, I don't I don't know. I don't know if it's like a ploy to to try and find out who the Jews are, or <laughs> he you know, just, with their, he with just their... wants an excuse to look at people's feet. I think is that what it is? That, that's the thing. I don't I don't know what it because Jews have like those weird ankles, don't they? A lot of them, where they, they they have a very skinny ankle. So I don't know if it's like just a, a kind of I'm gonna check if you're a Jew or not, or if it's more. Now, now I'm gonna be looking at every Jew's ankles to see if they got skinny ankles. <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, I always notice it in movies whenever you see because they they can never run really well. They, they always run with like their feet kicking out to the side because they, it's they have very very skinny ankles. <laughs> All right, well, cool, um, man. Really good talking to you. You're catching up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, right, cool. I shall. If I well, when are we on now? November. So yeah, I'll speak to you again before the festival. Anyway. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right, buddy. Yep. Have uh, a good night. Take care. Take bears. care. Uh, right. Thank you, everybody. I am back on Monday with Scouse. Um, the one that's been rearranged twice. So I shall be back on with him on Monday. Uh. So yeah, have a great weekend everybody and I shall see you next week. So thanks again for Flow Cal um, and I shall see you next week.